Everybody just like, come on, hello! hello. hello. <laughs> All right, great. This is going to be a really high energy weekend. It's going to be a lot of fun. Remember that your energy has to last you all weekend, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't let it out all out right now because I guarantee you have more where that came from. For how many of you is this your first startup weekend? Okay, that may have been the wrong question. For how many of you is this not your first startup weekend? Mm -hmm. One! Yay, I was <laughs> All right, well, uh, well, great. You guys are going to have a really good time. Um, how many of you are, say, designers? Make things look pretty? Yes. I've got a few of you guys. Any, any uh, developers? Just a couple of developers. Sort of. All right, that's cool. And how many of you guys have an idea you're going to pitch tonight? Oh. <laughs> Excellent. That's a good number, but I'm really hoping to double it before we actually before we actually get there. So, uh, so who am I? Um, my name is, uh, is Josh. Uh, people call me JDM. Uh, I'm the CEO of a, of a company called Mindbox Studios, which is a software development house and uh, an, in, an innovation lab. We have our headquarters down in Redding, California. We also have an office in Eugene and one out in Cincinnati. Essentially, what we do is we work with startups to help them get ideas and uh, take them to, to market. We build custom software for them um, along the way as well, so that's what I do. But that's not why I'm here today. While I'm here today is as your facilitator for this weekend. And that means that uh, the wonderful people who organize this ask me to come out and just give them a hand. So I'm just here to lend a supporting hand to, uh, to everybody here. That's really, that's really all my role. I'm gonna be with you guys the whole weekend. Um, which is actually why I, I, need to, I need to say something since we are going to spend the weekend together, is that uh, I kind of have like a personality, right, that's kind of, we'll just say loud, and uh, I have like, the hair that's kind of crazy, and I usually have bright colored shoes and bright colored ties and stuff like that. That's just because who I am. And that leads some people, and I'm sure it's nobody here, but it leads some people to think that maybe I might just maybe be a cool person. And I really don't want any of you to be like disappointed as we spend this weekend. So I'm going to disabuse you of that notion right now by telling you just a, uh, a couple of facts uh, about JDM. Right? Tell you a couple of facts about me. Uh, both of these, mostly the truth, I do in fact own action figures for uh, Star Trek The Next Generation. I own those. Uh, yeah, I'm glad I have some friends out there. Um, two things. One, they are action figures. They are not dolls. Let's just be really clear about that. Pull string? They don't have any pull string. No, these are the real ones. Like, I have uh, Captain Picard as Locutus and this full Borg thing. It's got the weapons and things and, and Riker and all that stuff. Um, uh, that I probably shouldn't say any any more than that, um, but uh, I, I, I do have those, and I'm totally a nerd. I love science, I love math, I love education. I, when I was in high school, I completed a tri-mathlon, and I didn't win. Um, I was robbed of the trophy that was so right for mine. <laughs> but um, but that's a little about me. So I assure you that I'm not I'm not a cool person, but none of you were really were really under that um, under that impression. So it was really hard for me to put this deck together without like putting in a bunch of Star Trek GIFs. Um, so I didn't, but um, actually this is gonna serve a purpose. So uh, throughout the weekend, whether it's tonight, whether it's tomorrow or on Sunday night, whenever you guys see uh, a Star Trek GIF like this, that's gonna be your cue to, uh, to jump up and cheer for, for, your, for your team. It sounds totally lame because it is, but it also uh, will help boost the energy in the room. It's, it's a really fun thing. Now, you guys don't have teams yet, but I do want to do a quick practice run. So everybody jump up and cheer for something. You guys suck at this. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. I'm to unbutton my shirt. So I, I mentioned uh, that I'm here as a facilitator to support the organizing team. So I do want to take a moment to call to call down. Can I get everybody in the organizing team to stand up for a second? Just uh, those of you, those of you who are who are here. So I'm coming in here. I get to have all this kinds of fun um, with you guys the, the whole weekend. But really, these five people and anybody else they dragooned into helping them did all of the work to to put this together. I mean, everything that you see happening here, they did all of this. It's absolutely wonderful. You guys are having a really good time. You don't have appreciation for it yet, except for maybe one of you, um, or not maybe because you came back. 
but uh, you will by the end of the weekend. If you guys have any questions about anything, you know, seek out these uh, wonderful and, and, and helpful people. Uh, so speaking of which, uh, now is a quick time to just hit up some venue logistics, so you guys can talk about those real quick. Okay, um, if you need to use the restroom, you'll have to go out these doors and go back in the way that you came if you came through the main building. Once you get into the main building through the single door here, you'll go left. On your immediate left through the double doors will be the men's restroom. The women's restroom is a little further down the hall, and then you go to the left, and it's right on the corner. So the restrooms are in the main building. So that door will be open the entire time that we're here. Um, in terms of tomorrow morning, we're going to be meeting in here. The front doors of the main building will be closed and locked. So the suggestion from me is to go up to just past the preschool that sits on the main road on Everett Memorial. And just past that, you can make a right down a driveway. Looks like a driveway. And it'll take you all the way around the manufacturing building into the back area here. And you can park back here. And then you can just walk in. Okay, if there's no place to park here, you can park out front and just walk to the back around the side of the building. And is there anything else? Any notes about uh, trash or anything like that? What time? The, he'll, he's going to we'll go over that. We'll go over that. But the, uh, go ahead. Yeah, I don't know when it comes in, but <laughs> we are hoping to have food for you the whole weekend. Yes, you're spending your time here. So part of your registration includes food. So breakfast starts at 8, and the show will start at 9. But we will be here at 8 with yogurt, granola, and famous muffin glory, uh, morning glory muffins. Any other questions? OK. And we're available. Like Josh said, just ask us. We'll do our best to guide you in the right direction. All right, cool. Thank you. Let's get a hand for the organization. Come on, I put this in. more things to to go through some it's going to be something that's going to be fun then we're going to get to the pitches and then the projector is not even going to be on until Sunday night again because this is not an event about talking about things it's an event about doing things so we're going to get back to that in a minute but we have a few more logistic things to go through so let's go ahead and move on through them <laughs> said, uh, we usually at these things have a, uh, a few minutes for uh, a speaker to come in and talk about their adventures in entrepreneurship or anything else that they want to talk about. And so uh, we're fortunate to have Chad and Todd from Mount Medics come in and talk to us today. So I'm going to step aside and let them take the stage. Uh, I think you guys have some slides you're going to set up as well. Um, I did throw up a couple of really cool facts about chat that I learned uh, today just like I did for myself, but um, you may peruse them while they're getting set up. So, uh, chat and talk. Started there. You guys want to hear a really stupid joke? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, oh, they're set up. Gonna have to wait. Suck them darn. All right. Well, my name's Chad, um, and um, Todd and I. Todd just got off a fire assignment, and we own. Uh, we're co-owners. We also have another business partner, uh, Aaron Stutz, and um, we started the business about three years ago. Uh, we own Mountain Medics. Uh, started in, here in Siskiyou County, and what um, is so cool is we didn't have this opportunity that you guys get to have, and all these mentorships and all that, so all, a lot of what we learned was just kind of going along, and, uh, there you go. and just kind of learning things just as we're, you know, uh, we're like, oh, we need this license, we need this certification, we need this. Permit um, to do to do what we've started, and um, you know uh, we're a third year in business. Uh, we've just surpassed uh, over a million dollars in sales and services, so we're kind of excited that we. But um, 
So one of the things I kind of want to show you guys that I always keep in the back of my head when uh, we're working and things aren't going exactly as you planned or you have to. Well, I don't know if you remember them. Uh, no, I remember them. I said, this is what it is, okay? I said, empty your mind. Be formless, shapeless, like water. Now you put water into a cup, it becomes the cup. You put water into a bottle, it becomes the bottle. You put it in a teapot, it becomes the teapot. Now water can flow or it can crash. Be water, my friend. <laughs> Uh, kind of go back to that back in my mind is because a lot of things with business can sometimes not work and we hit a roadblock and I go all right just be fluid let's change what we're doing and let's move on a different way you know when we first started Mount Medics uh, one of the things we were doing we were doing interfacility transfers and we did that for six months and we're dealing with insurance companies we're dealing with private pay we're dealing with all this stuff and we're like kind of isn't working so much and then we kind of dove in a little bit more into government contracting which is kind of what we started what we wanted to do in the beginning as well but you know just being fluid and with whatever you're doing you know and um, I don't know do you have anything to kind of talk on that as well or yeah, I'll bring it up later. yeah. so um, just a brief history about myself I'm not a business person um, I am now I guess but, uh, you know, I went to College of the Siskiyous. I grew up in Alaska, uh, came down here when I was 18 years old. I uh, went to College of the Siskiyous, uh, got my paramedic license. I worked as a medic for a local ambulance company, and I contracted out for different various government agencies, Forest Service, CAL FIRE, National Guard. Um, kind of went on. I, um, now I'm also a nurse. I went to College of the Siskiyous, and I got my RN and uh, raised my family here, my wife, with my wife and two kids uh, here in Mount Shasta. And then um, as I was working as a nurse, Todd and myself and our other business partner, Aaron, Dr. Stutz, uh, we were working night shift in the ER going, how do we get out from underneath these fluorescent lights? And, you know, late nights in the ER, maybe things are a little bit slower, you know, when we kind of started bouncing ideas off of each other and it kind of just kind of worked out and uh, you know some of the you know things and Todd's going to kind of do um, tell about himself and what he's learned. So my name is Todd Wimmer. Um, I graduated high school in Santa Rosa and came up here with a small scholarship to do the fire academy at COS. Um, so I completed that program and then started working for the Forest Service as a firefighter for about five seasons and um, got exposed to a medical call one day working on the engine and decided I wanted to go get my paramedic license. So enrolled in the first paramedic program also at COS and uh, started working at EMS up in the north part of the county for about eight years and then ended up in the emergency department their job with, with Chad and Aaron. And um, for the last couple of years there at the ER, I was kind of thinking that I wanted to start getting back outside, maybe getting back out onto the fire somehow as a paramedic. And uh, after researching different business ideas for about a couple of years, I decided I was going to buy an ambulance uh, by myself and try and get a contract out onto the wildfire. So I started collaborating with different people at work, trying to see if there's anybody that might be interested in you know, undertaking this mission with me. And uh, luckily, Chad and Aaron kind of rose to the occasion and decided that they would want to get involved with me. And uh, now it's been yeah, it's almost been three years, and the company owns three ambulances, a couple of mobile medical unit trailers, and uh, more vehicles than we have a place to store, basically. So it's grown really fast. Basically, you know, we found an industry that didn't have um, a lot of providers doing what we wanted to do, and a lot of people say that we found a really good niche. But I think it's important to network with people around you and see if anybody has similar ideas that maybe would want to work with you on that. Or have you know resources like money to invest and the ideas that you have if you don't have your own. And, uh, yeah, we're really fortunate all to kind of collide on this idea together. Um, it's 
hopefully I'll have a lot of different things to offer the business. And uh, yeah, I just really want to encourage you guys, you know, no matter what it is that you think about doing, I wouldn't let anybody uh, talk you out of it because there was a lot of people that we worked with that didn't believe that we were going to be able to pull this off. And I, I didn't even expect to end up where we are right now. So anything's possible. There's a lot of support here in the county because there's not a lot of people that are uh, starting new businesses and I think that we definitely need it for our economy. So I would really like to encourage you guys to kind of just go for it. You know, leave your fears behind and see what you can accomplish. Um, we have had a lot of obstacles to overcome starting this business. Like Chad said, we didn't really do a lot of research prior to starting this venture. And so we just, step by step, we started encountering all these different obstacles that we needed to overcome. We found out that we needed to apply for um, a business license, or a business license first, yeah. And then uh, we had to apply for an ambulance service license. And we had to get approval by the county. And um, working in EMS for 14 years, we all kind of felt like there was a need for another ambulance service in the county. But uh, it's kind of a fragile system here, and so we had to go to a lot of county board meetings, and there was a lot of concern about you know, a new entity coming in and possibly damaging the 911 system. God knows I don't want to be the person that causes that to happen, so uh, we had to work with a lot of different people, and we kind of had to um, sacrifice a lot of the things that we thought we were going to do. And uh, like Bruce, Bruce Lee said, you know, we had to be fluid and adjust to what the market <coughs> industries needed around us and not, and, you know, our original plan didn't necessarily fall through the way that we thought it was going to, but, um, you know, we found other avenues, I and mean, like Chad said, we do a lot of government contracting now, and uh, it's been really successful. You know, we haven't had to deal with a lot of local uh, politics, and I'm grateful for that, actually, so you never know. Some of those obstacles may guide you in a direction that you weren't planning on, but maybe for the better. I'm going to let Chad tell you a little bit more about the business and what we do. So what Mouth Medics does, um, we, uh, we do everything from swift water rescue, rope rescue. We have 4 by 4 ambulances. Uh, we get contracted out by the Forest Service, by CAL FIRE, uh, to go uh, in remote areas uh, with the firefighters. It might be hiking in 12 miles, uh, spending two weeks out on the fire without coming out and uh, we've got 24 employees uh, that work with us and we go through training every year we do swift water rescue training during the off season we do like uh, cpr first aid teaching uh, first aid to firefighters to local uh, local departments uh, teaching flight nursing and flight paramedic classes and down at our office in Dunsmuir. Um, this is uh, uh, one of the rescues that we had done. Uh, this was our first ambulance um, that Todd had originally purchased. And uh, we had a patient that we were flying out uh, that day uh, that was out on fire out, uh, outside of Orleans, uh, out past uh, Happy Camp. But well, we are a nationwide country. Uh, we'll go anywhere that we're called. Uh, you know, South Carolina, we worked, Todd worked out there this last year. And there's kind of some more photos of the crew getting to a fire, and uh, kind of our, our everyday life. Uh, this last year, I worked, the thing this was starting a business and running it, it's, it pretty much engulfs everything you do. And so, you know, this last summer, I had five days off out of, uh, it was about 85, uh, about about 80 days or so, it seems like I had about five days off of work. And other than that, you're working every single day. And during the off season, for us, or it could be a downtime, you know, you're always trying to think of more ways to make money and how to get your business out there. So there's a lot of two, three o'clock in the morning, it's like get my family to bed, and then I just kind of stay awake working, working on contracts and, and bidding out. Um, we were down in Arizona this last year, uh, and uh, so the crew got to stop up at the Grand Canyon. And uh, this other one is out from uh, in the Marble Mountains, and that's a paramedic and an EMT uh, that worked for us as well. So um, 
it's kind of cool that we're able to uh, provide jobs, uh, good paying jobs here in Siskiyou County. Um, so far this, uh, well, this last year we've paid out about 400, roughly about $400,000 on the wages. So that's all going back into our community. So, you know, that's one of the um, things that I really love about being a business owner is you get to, um, you know, payday. Everybody's stoked for payday, and you know you're able to cut checks and provide you know good livable wage for a family. You know this gentleman Matt right here, he's got a you know a two month old baby, and uh, so it's exciting to you know give him a job. And Luckily, he made it home for the delivery. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, Feel free, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask uh, any questions as we uh, kind of go through this. But, you know, some of the things that we kind of wanted to talk about, we live in an area, it's a low income, low economic area. And um, being small business certified is very important. That's just kind of something that we found. And we also live in a hub zone area. And, you know, you guys can look that up and learn what that does for your, for your business. But getting those, even those small little certifications for a business like us, yes? Uh, being a startup company, what separated you from the competition? Um, being a startup, uh, and what separated us from the competition, <coughs> and for which us, in, there, which in turn makes there really was, was not a whole lot of competition. We saw a need, we were working in the ER, and we're getting a lot of firefighters coming in into the emergency department. and so. Um, I had contracted out in the past uh, as a paramedic uh, for doing a very similar thing, but there is no business out there quite like Mountain Medics and the services that we provide. Uh, you know, putting a nurse out in fire camp, or we can bring a doctor out in fire camp in a rural area where, you know, Orleans, California, it's two and a half hours to a hospital in any direction that you go to. So we bring the emergency department out to them. And, you know, we've been, we're put on standby for the hurricanes. Uh, we were just notified again that we were put on standby for Hurricane Harvey coming in. Um, because having those four by four ambulances at a moment's notice headed that way. Um, there's very um, few areas that can do that. You know, like Mount Shasta Ambulance. You know, they're providing a service for this community and now we're dedicated to providing that service for the country. And so uh, this last year, you know, for numbers and stuff, we've turned down 60, um, 60 different orders, you know, that you know, we can only provide so much because we have three ambulances and two med units. Um, so we can provide five orders at any time, but we turned, you know, the summers, just the phones ringing off the hook, people needing our service. So your guys' job is starting a business is to find that market on, you know, what what's out there that they need your service. Why do they need to call you? Um, let's see, what else kind of did we want to talk about? Um, one of the things that I also kind of want to just briefly touch on, and um, we are, are in a partnership. It's like a marriage, but uh, we don't get the SEX. <laughs> but we do get the money issues, and you know, thankfully, we don't really have a whole lot of money issues. But being in a partnership, it can be very uh, tricky, and communication is key. And there's times that, um, you know, very few times that we uh, didn't agree on stuff. But there's all these checks and balances, you know, it's like whether it's a a new ambulance or whether it's another new piece of equipment or how much to pay ourselves. That's one of the things that um, if you do are getting into a business with a partnership, uh, that's one of the, I'd say the pitfalls. The hardest thing is maintaining a friendship and deciding on where and how you're going to do that together. Um, you know, I probably talked to Todd six to ten times a day on the phone. You know, <laughs> and it's unreal, you know, and, um, but that's what it takes. And, um, 
you know, and I think we both, like, we know we know our friendship boundaries and all that. So you have to have that clear, precise communication with your with your partner. That would be my key point of advice is if you choose to take up a business partner, be prepared to have some uncomfortable conversations. <laughs> I mean, you will be sharpening your communication skills greatly if you can succeed with that. Because there's, I mean, there's just some money, mostly, is usually uncomfortable to talk about, but it's the most important thing. And uh, one of the best things about a partnership is dividing up the work and knowing and setting your roles um, with your partners. And you know, like there's times, you know, it's like I do payroll. You know, Todd will balance the books, and you know, and we're all working out there. Someday we can pay other people to do that for us. But yeah. As a start of business, you got to try and do as much of that stuff as you can. And just like, so, you just yeah, is, is there all, always one of you at the office at any given time? Hardly ever, actually. Yeah. <laughs> we we do get together to go to the office quite a bit in the winter just to kind of collaborate on ideas and take care of bills and you know apply for other certificates. But, uh, in the summer, we're pretty much out in the field the whole time. It would be lovely to have somebody in the office for us, but we haven't gotten there yet. Family members run the office? Nope. Just us. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, that he has called his wife to go get the mail. To that would stop a lot of But we, you know, we carry sat phones, so we're uh, available to communication that way. But yeah, that is um, you know one of the downfalls of of, the, of being an owner operator, I'd say. You know. But you know, and employees are definitely tough as well. You know, having employees and having good employees and trusting them with everything that you pour your heart and soul into. In talking about employees, you mentioned kind of having a down season. Are you at a point now? Because I'm assuming you weren't always. Um, where you don't have to hire people seasonally, or is that how you're managing the off-season that you hire people for when you're busiest? And how hard is that as a, as a small business owner to find employees that are willing to take seasonal work? It's extremely difficult, especially because the people that we interview and hire, we're asking them to remain available until an assignment comes up for them. And so just people are sacrificing other jobs that they may have or could have and they're sitting there waiting, depending on us, to call them for income, you know. So you have to, we have to have extremely dedicated people to commit to the summer work. But, you know, in the off-season, we are constantly getting together and trying to find new ways to generate income. And um, I think soon we'll be able to provide full-time work for people. A lot of our employees come from uh, ski patrol. They ski patrol there in the winter time because they've got that medical background, rope rescue sort of mentality. And then in the summertime, uh, some of them they used to be seasonal firefighters, and now they're seasonal firefighter, you know, medical responders. With them. So, so the crossover is quite nice right there. And, uh, and, so, and, and in relation to that, you mentioned being countrywide. Do you have employees in other areas that are high risk? Like we know Florida gets hurricanes and and New Orleans. Do you have? people on call in that area so you're not having to transport so many people from here or are you always hiring locally? Um, we mostly hire locally um, and then uh, we, we do pay for travel wherever the people need to go. Uh, we do have uh, some employees that are out of Portland, we have some that are out of LA. Um, but we're able to get here and we're able to train together and when we're, then when we're deployed we work together a little bit more um, fluidly that way. We try to hire as many people locally as we can, and then after that, Yeah. Any other questions, you guys? So, yes? How did you start up with uh, the funding? You said you have 4x4 four four vehicles, and it sounds like an expensive business to start up. It is, How'd that yeah. Go for you? And um, Todd had some money, and then our medical director, Dr. <coughs> Stutz, um, he was able to throw in some money. So it started up with just a med unit, 
and um, and then the, and the and the end. So it's just wise purchasing. So look for low mileage vehicles at you know affordable prices like that. First MLC bought it was about thirty eight thousand dollars. I personally went in all in on <laughs> so kind of uh, made me more determined to make sure that it worked out. So that's why I encourage you to do your research before you know, get it over your head before you find out that the county isn't going to let you open your business. <laughs> and the thing is, like, too, is like, you know, and then the deciding when, when and how to pay yourselves, you know, because you want to, you want to be able to reap from, um, you know, what you just created. And uh, what we've also, uh, you know, I, I still work in our local EO. We've been successful, but I still like nursing, so and I don't want to pull from the business. So if you, you know, you have to have a, a second job, you know, to to make it work, and, and then I know one day I'll be able to quit that job and you know, be mathematics full time, one hundred percent. Well, thanks for having us here tonight. And, uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Uh, I think we're at the bottom of the barrel. But keep going. Come on. Humility. Fish. Integrity. Humility. 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 Leave it to Angel. Be like, sir, that's not a word. <laughs> Humility. Economically viable. That's two oh, words, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Business. Cooperation. Sustainable. Cars. Intent. Cars. All right, let's get three more. Viable. Healthy. 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 Collaboration. Collaboration. There you go. We have organic taste. Let's have a hand for my assistants. Okay. So now, thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and count you off. Remember your number, please. One, two, three, four, five. 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 Okay, I'm really impressed that I didn't count to six. I always count to six um, when I do that just by accident. Okay, great. Do you guys remember your numbers? Okay, so in just a moment, you guys are going to form teams with your numbers, right? You're going to do it yourself, and then here's what we're going to do. You guys are going to have five minutes as a team, okay, to create a business from, from these words. But there's going to be a catch. Each of you are going to elect one person who's going to come up and pick two words. First come, first serve. So get there fast. Okay, you're gonna pick two words when I tell you. All right, and then you're gonna have five minutes to create a business from those. And somebody from your team is gonna have to come up and give a 30-second pitch on that business. It does yeah. not have to be a viable business. Have fun with it. It's gonna be ridiculous. Okay, as you can see from from some of the words. Okay, so step one: gather with your numbers. Five. Okay, so you guys all have a leader? Okay, so you're going to come up, that leader's going to come up and pick two words for your team and cross them off, because no two teams can have the same words. Circle it across the board. No, the words Ice blanket. Ice blanket. I did it.
Team, come on up and get in line to do a There we go. You guys get to uh, fight it out over the order. Yes. Yeah. All right. So you guys. <laughs> All right. So you guys are going to get again 30 seconds. Tell us what your business is. <laughs> And it uh, should involve those two words. You ready? You can first. I'll break the ice. <laughs> okay, how many people like baking in it? Like what? Raise your hand. Bacon. 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 And how many people like jetpacks? <laughs> <laughs> how about if your bacon was delivered by jetpack? You put in an order for however much bacon you want. And the jetpack is a special jetpack that you will cook the bacon on the way <laughs> to delivering to you. And by, and the jetpack is fueled by the grease. <laughs> so then, you know, we have the, the greenhouse effect, you know. Sustainable, Sustainable energy. energy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Too hot! 
Hello. <laughs> Our business was success suits. So the whole idea is if you have a nice suit and it's raining, you don't want to get it ruined, right? So you turn it inside out and it's a raincoat. Oh, yeah. So it's pretty easy. Just take it off, turn it inside out, raincoat. Pretty, pretty simple. Pretty, pretty great. And our whole motto is uh, be successfully dry with our success suits. <laughs> product is an ice blanket and with the ice blanket it's battery operated and it um, can be for firefighters who are out on missions to fight fires and it makes um, it's battery operated and it can go as a blanket or you can expand our line into a shirt where it basically keeps your body temperature at the right temperature when you're fighting fires so you don't get overheated or have a heat stroke and it can also be for heat stroke victims who are overheated or are exhausted All right. Hey everybody Hey next time you you've got a craving for you know making a pizza or something you're going to want to get yourself some stinky cheese. <laughs> stinky cheese is cheese for your gas, gas for your cheese. And the best thing about it comes from sustainable cows. <laughs> the whole facility operated on methane. It's, it's the, you know, the, it's the envy of all the mice, believe me. <laughs> so again, you know, if you're having a nice dinner party, you got your wine, you want stinky cheese, <laughs> really rock out the party. Oh, yeah. <laughs> does, does anybody else really want to know what a sustainable cow is? <laughs> <laughs> sustainable cheese. <laughs> All right, um, our two words were organic business, and we came up with organic furniture we'd like to sell you. Made from locally grown produce. Uh, we have local sheep for the stuffing on the furniture. We're going to have locally grass-fed cows, um, also on organic diets, that will um, provide the surface of the furniture, the, the leather, the leather um, seat for you, all non-toxic and very healthy. <laughs> Okay, let's give everybody a round of applause. I can only hope that the ideas you guys pitched shortly are better than those. But uh, if they're not, that's cool. We'll make it work. That's, uh, that's fine. So um, I want to run through a little bit about what Startup Weekend is uh, while you guys think about your, your pitches. Um, so between now and then, right, let's, let's take another tally. Who's actually planning? You guys can sit back down if you want to. You can stand. But you can sit back. Um, who's planning on pitching an idea tonight? You guys saw how easy that was. Yes, there are more hands than there were. Okay, we're going to get that number even higher in the next in a couple of minutes. It takes me to go over this. Trust me, you, you won't regret it. Just, just get up there and do it. It doesn't matter, right? Uh, in um, Reading, at our startup weekend last year, uh, uh, the second place was somebody who thought over their idea in the car on the way over. Second place. All right, so pitch. You won't, you won't regret it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Okay. So, um, what is, uh, oh, okay, what, all right, so uh, what is uh, Startup Weekend? And hopefully all of you guys at least have a loose conception because you're here. Um, but uh, essentially, uh, Startup Weekend is really big. And I want to give you guys a scope of what it is, right? It's 54 hours of, of getting, uh, taking an idea and making it into a very real business, right? A very real business at the end. So let's go over some stats. Okay, everybody likes numbers, or at least I do, because again, try math one. But uh, everybody likes numbers. So there have been 350,000 people who've gone through Startup Weekend. There have been thousands of business ventures that have been launched out of Startup Weekend uh, in 1,300 cities and more than 150 countries around the globe. And just to give you a little bit of an idea, this map here that I pulled last night, this is a map of all of the Startup Weekends that are happening right now. Cool. Not this year, oh. not this month. These are happening this weekend. And there's even more happening, you know, every every weekend, right? So just a, like a sample, you can see some of these. We got ones in Kuala Lumpur. There's one in Nairobi, Kenya. There's one in Cincinnati, Ohio. These are happening all over the place, all the time, by by people just like you guys, right? So it's it's really everywhere, um, and that's great. There've been a lot of successful companies that have been started from it. That's not really the point. 
of Startup Weekend is to learn how to start a successful business, but these are actually companies that came directly out of Startup Weekend. If I were to give a list of all the people who've gone through Startup Weekend and then became successful, we would be here all night, right? And that's really, that's really the point. But really successful businesses actually come, um, come out of this. Now, um, the Techstars uh, is who is the company that sponsors Startup Week and their organization. So I'm going to show you a brief video rather than tell you uh, exactly what uh, Techstars is. And let's hope that this link just clicks through and the internet's working. <laughs> Techstars is a global ecosystem that empowers entrepreneurs to bring new technologies to market wherever they choose to build their business. Our ecosystem includes founders, alumni, mentors, community leaders, investors, sponsors, and many more. We run accelerators all over the world in different vertical markets. One of the big visions of Techstars is being able to support entrepreneurs in every stage. Startup programs for tech stars are a reflection of the early stage events supporting entrepreneurs really at the grassroots community level. Startup Week is a celebration of entrepreneurs in cities around the globe. Startup Digest is a personalized newsletter for all things startup around the world. It's about helping entrepreneurs get their start. Startup Weekend is really the best launching point into programs like Accelerators. Techstars, obviously, is really investing in communities and ecosystems. We all have a drive to create something new. Startup Weekend is that opportunity for you to express that. There are people in rooms like this in places all over the world learning the same things, experiencing the same things, and I hope that's inspiring for you. To date, at Startup Weekend events, we've had more than 100,000 attendees, over 23,000 something companies, over 140 countries. You get to meet a lot of cool people from all over the place, and you get to feel that entrepreneur energy. Since the weekend, I've actually kept in touch with a few people from my team and also managed to leverage the networks of the people I met that weekend to meet others in the startup community. My favorite thing about Startup Weekend is just how human it is. We have built a platform that really gets to connect communities around real problems, real people, real ideas. This is a journey, it is a life choice that, you know, it's not easy, but we can help guide people through it. Get back to work. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, the, no, don't want to play this. This is not my mouse. No struggle. Oh, come on. Victory. So one other one other little little uh, programming programming note. So this is a week that's going to be fun. Everybody's going to have a lot of fun, but it's kind of like a workplace, right? Um, and that doesn't mean it's stodgy by any means. Hopefully, you can take your cue from me on that. But I guess if I were to summarize it, I would say don't be an ass, right? That would be that would be my rule for for the weekend. Um, be, be a nice person. I think was the way I was supposed to say that. But. Um, <laughs> Just, uh, I mean, seriously, like, be, be, be mindful of other people, right? There's a lot of diversity in the room. There always is. And um, just be respectful of everybody else. Um, that's uh, all I'm going to say about that. I, I doubt I'm going to have to mention this again, but I have to put it in there so I don't get sued. And then, um, okay, so we talked about Techstars. Techstars is a global company. They put all this on. They're the ones who uh, select volunteers like me to come out and facilitate these. They're the ones that are uh, venerable organizers go, uh, go through to, to put these things on. We use their brand. We use their resources. But these things aren't possible without local sponsors, without people in your area that are investing in your entrepreneurial community. So I'm going to let the organizers come up again and talk about some of the sponsors. Yeah, we're really grateful to um, many, many people held the space for this idea to happen. So um, I'm sorry, the logos are the people that actually gave the money. <laughs> so we had um, some significant sponsorship from the Ford Family Foundation, from Pacific Power, from Tri-Counties Bank and Scott Valley Bay, uh, Mount Shasta Engineering, Mount Shasta Rotary, the Far Northern Center for International Trade and Development. Sorry, they're not up here. They were a late-in sponsor, but they're making sure that you all eat well all weekend. Um, also, just want to do a small shout-out to Siskiyou Media Council, because they're going to 
uh, work with us to Ooh. edit this video and have it available. And um, if hopefully you aren't noticing that there's a video in the room. <laughs> 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 um, so we're grateful for that sponsorship and also for um, all your coaches and mentors and judges this weekend are volunteering their time. Other people have popped in and said, this sounds interesting, I'm new in the community, I've got some experience, I want to help. So just really grateful for all of you who have come out to volunteer your time in support of all these great ideas. And for the Good morning. Morning. Mark, not quite done yet. <laughs> um, I think she meant, but wait, there's more. <laughs> I think there's more. Um, this idea did come out. Some of you in the room have been part of Young Professionals. So I, I just want to give some credit to that initial kernel or seed of thought um, from a group of folks in town that wanted to see an event like this because they wanted to see what are some other new ideas and their. Um, they're from all over, so it's not just Mount Shasta, um, but with a strong interest in, hey, we always want to hear what the new best idea is, and maybe we can get some investment in it. Maybe that's what's going to go in down on Main Street, or maybe that's who I'm going to be employed by next. So that's sort of the spirit from which we're here, and we bring Techstars and Josh. So thank you, and um, yeah. <coughs> Uh, okay, so a uh, couple of global sponsors I'm going to mention uh, as well, they give you stuff for free. So the first one is, you know, all see powered by Google for entrepreneurs. Well, Google has their cloud platform where you, know, you can host servers and technology, same stuff that Google runs. Just for participating in Startup Week, you can get 300 bucks spent on their cloud. You guys are going to have to build something this weekend. It doesn't necessarily need to involve software, but you're going to be building something this weekend. So keep in mind, you got 300 bucks on the Google platform on the table. Also, uh, .co is a uh, sponsoring domain. You can get a free domain, uh, a .co domain, so you guys are going to get on your teams. You can, uh, you're can, you going to have to pick a domain name, and you can get one for, for free. I'll give you guys all these resources uh, later on. Don't feel like you have to memorize them. I honestly don't even know why the URL is there. And uh, lastly, uh, appear.in, which is a conference. If you ever use Google Hangouts or Google Meet or Skype like that, it's like that. But it runs in the browser, and it doesn't require any plugins. It just, uh, it, you know, you open it up, and boom, you're, you're in a video conference. So you guys are going to have to get out of the building and talk to people. We're going to go over that. But you're going to have to validate with customers. And if you can't go to them, maybe you can bring them to you through video. So uh, you got all those things. So let's talk about what you're going to do um, this, this weekend. So think about why you're here. What are your goals um, for, uh, for the weekend? Anybody want to share a goal? Anybody want to share a goal? Find yes. answers. Find what? Answers. Find answers. Okay. I don't know what the question is, but good. Um, to learn about, um, like, business. Great. Well, I can guarantee you will. Uh, uh, just practice presenting an idea in front of people. That's a great for that. Yeah. To develop a solid business plan. Man, you guys are—you guys got all the right ideas. This is this is awesome. So these next slides are going to be kind of pointless, but um, you're going to validate an idea, develop a solid business model, right? You're going to develop and validate a very real idea. This is the skill that you're learning. This is going to be on ideas that you guys are all bringing to the room, but it's really about how you do it, less than it is about the team that you're working on. You're going to learn how to validate an idea. I guarantee everybody here is going to learn something I didn't know before. That just happens. I'm going to learn something I didn't know before. Um, if the pitches from before are any indication. And um, you're going to meet people, and you're going to build something great. It's, it's, it's going to be awesome. Remember those things that Chad and Todd were talking about with uh, building a team and that learning experience that goes with that, how it's like a marriage? It's more true than, uh, than you probably realize at this point. Um, so uh, you're going to learn a lot of that as well. There's a lot of other things you can get out of the weekend. Um, you guys actually said some of these, so I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna bother with any but one, which is do one thing that scares you. And judging by the faces in this room, the uh, Star Trek GIFs were on that list, or maybe it was the result of the GIF, I don't know. But either way, I saw a lot of uncomfortable faces there. But you guys are gonna do something that scares you. If that thing is public speaking, do it. Again, this is a safe place. Bad pitches don't exist. That's a lot to do. But you're not going to give a bad pitch. You're going to give a good pitch, right? It doesn't. It's not going to about like, oh, I'm going to go up there and speak with perfect sentences and this really polished thing. If you practiced, you're going to you're going to do even better. Of course, practice makes perfect. Um, but it's about getting up there. It's about doing that thing. 
right? This is an opportunity to come into a group of people who are just like you, who are at the same level you are, and do something that they're not going to be like judgy for. You're not doing this in front of like a bunch of people. It's not Shark Tank, right? Tonight is not Shark Tank. Sunday's a little like Shark Tank. But not really. But, it's, uh, but tonight is not like Shark Tank. So step out of your comfort zone a little bit and, and, and really, really pitch. And that's probably not the last time I'm going to try to convince you to pitch. OK. Um, so let's just go over the schedule really quickly. This will be not like the times of everything which you saw online. This is really more about um, what you're going to be expected to do. Right, because this weekend is about doing. I'm gonna walk you through this, and then you guys are gonna pitch, and you're gonna form teams, and you're gonna work all weekend, and until Friday or until Sunday night, when you guys come back, I I'm done. This isn't some. This isn't a conference. You don't go here for lectures. This is about doing. Right. So tonight, what are you doing? You're gonna give pitches. You're gonna form teams around those things. I'm gonna talk about how that process works when we get to it. Um, you're gonna. Do a brain dump, right? Whoever, uh, whoever's idea, right, found out that team, we do a brain dump. Everybody's going to give all the information that they have, get everything on the table, right, for, that you could possibly know tonight about that idea. And then, and this is super important, figure out what your deliverables are for this week. So we're going to talk about judging criteria, and you're going to take your idea, and you're going to look at the judging criteria, and you say, what are we going to have done by Sunday, and who's going to do it, right? So that's tonight. By the time you leave, try to do all of that. Tomorrow, you're going to come in and you're going to have a lot of things on your agenda. It's going to seem like more than you could possibly get done this weekend, but I assure you, you can do it. You're going to look uh, at, the, at the market, right? Do you have competitors? If you tell me no, I'm going to tell you you're wrong, okay? I guarantee you, you have competitors. So find out who your competitors are. What's your competitive advantage? Why are people going to take your product versus other people's product? Figure out what you're building. Like, what is that first thing that you have to build? We call our minimum viable product. So you're going to figure out what your MVP is. Not most valuable person, because that's obviously me, but it's going to be what is the smallest thing that you can build that you would maybe charge money for, right? Okay, then you're going to actually have to start building it, right? So all that, all that happened by like age 15, right? You got all that out in the morning, it's done, and now you move on to start building the thing. And this is really important. Again, you have to build something, and you have to validate it. You have to go talk to customers. You have to see their eyes dilate because they love your idea so much. And if they don't, and they won't, then you're going to have to do what's called a pivot. You're going to have to say, okay, well, the customers weren't responding to this, so we're going to have to change a little bit until they do. If you're a big car company and you go to create a new model of car, right, we call that product development because what you're doing is saying, okay, we have all these customers and my competitors have all of these customers. And I know from surveys and my research and everything else exactly what our customers want. So we're going to try some variation on it. We're going to develop a product that we think is going to meet that uh, meet that customer market. That's not what you're doing this weekend. Because not only at the start of this weekend do you not know what your product is, you don't know who your customer is. They don't exist because your product doesn't exist. So what we're doing is customer development. We are figuring out through the process of discovery and building who it is that is eventually going to use your product. And the only way you can do that is by talking to them. At startup weekends, that's people doing surveys online, right? You can do Google surveys or Survey Monkeys or whatever you want to do. Get out, hit your hit your uh, your Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, get all of your friends out there to give you uh, results to your survey. But that's not enough. You're gonna have to talk to people face to face. Some of whom are maybe in this room, and otherwise you have to figure out where in the big world of Mount Shasta are your customers. And again, maybe you have to find them online. Find out who your customers are because that customer validation is one of the key judging criteria. Okay. Um, and again, I mentioned that idea of pivot. You're going to have to pivot. If you don't pivot throughout the course of the weekend, you're probably not going to win. I'm just going to be honest with you. Like, if you're not pivoting, if, you, if the idea that's pitched right now is the idea you pitch on Sunday, you will not win because you didn't learn anything. Not that that's what they're judging you on. They're not. But nobody has an idea right off the bat. Steve Blank, who's the guy who came up with uh, this uh, conception of the process in a book he called The Four Steps to the Epiphany. I will be a test on that later. Uh, he, he, he said that there are no facts inside the building, so get out of the building. And that's what you guys are going to be judged on. Okay? All right. Speaking of which, uh, because uh, Saturday is all about building and all about validating and all about doing that, we have wonderful coaches who are going to help you guys uh, figure out uh, any answers to questions that you have. They're going to lend their expertise. Over on this table over here, is it ready to go? Nancy? Right, yes. 
Yes. Okay, cool. So we have a list of all the duchesses, the same ones that you guys saw on online, um, with time slots tomorrow you can sign up with to talk to them. So you know, it has their name, it has their expertise in a time slot. Once the teams are all formed and everything, before you leave tonight or, or maybe tomorrow morning, go over there and sign up for the coach you want to talk to. And that way you can lean on their expertise. Now probably these coaches are going to give you conflicting advice. And welcome to entrepreneurship. You guys got to figure out how much you want to take their advice, how you want to use that time that you have with them, and, uh, and where you want to go with that. So these people are all volunteers too. They're all successful people with great ideas, and they came uh, just, just to help you guys out. So let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> aren't up there, but um, so pay attention also to the, the names and the expertise that's there. Okay, I dropped the ball. There are more than five. But, uh, forget that. Just edit that out when you remember this later. Do you want to just have them raise their hand? Sure, can yes. Can we, get a, can we get a show of hands from all the yeah. coaches if you're here tonight? Oh, great. I think I'm not mm -hmm. getting close. So uh, later, later tonight, you guys are going to be lying in bed, you're going to be exhausted. Take a moment, you're going to have your phone right there, we all have our phones right there. Go, go to the website and just scroll through and think about, you know, how, I know my idea now, who do I want to talk to? Who do I want to hunt that? Be a shark. Okay, and that takes us to Sunday Pitch Day. It's going to be a fun, it doesn't rhyme, it should, but it's a fun day. So um, there, there's going to be some, uh, some registration that you guys uh, have to do. More details on that, don't worry about it. You're going to have to figure out... Um, that you have customers. You have to figure out that you have a go-to-market strategy, that you can make money doing this, that you have a business model. You're going to have to actually build out a presentation because Sunday night you're pitching to a panel of illustrious judges whom we will introduce on Sunday night. So you're going to have to put together a, a presentation deck, use whatever format or platform you like, um, and then practice. We're going to have some organized pitch practices. I love pitches. Pitches are one of my favorite things in the world. So we're going to we're going to do a little fun uh, practicing at some point during the day. Um, but uh, but then we are. This is mandatory. Mandatory tech check. Okay. So if you're doing off your your laptop rather than say uh, Bright's laptop that's plugged in here or whatever, then we need to make sure that that technology is actually going to work. Otherwise, you fall flat on your face, um, which I have seen happen, and I really don't. So we'll do a tech check, and then we'll do our final presentations, and uh, then uh, once we do that, the judges are going to deliberate, and uh, we'll go pick winners. First step in the new plan. So that's it. Here are the times associated with that. These are all on the website, too, so you can see them there. Uh, just a rough outline if you want a picture. Important things to note, doors open at 8 a.m., uh, breakfast, you'll have breakfast here, so you can get a power up, coffee up, or whatever your thing is, and um, do your thing, we'll have lunch, We'll have dinner. We'll probably do a check-in at some point in there. You have your coaches tomorrow. Sunday again, uh, 8 a.m., doors open. Do your thing. We're going to do a tech check. We're going to do some pitch practice. We're going to do all that. Um, and then we're going to have a little early dinner uh, because we have to get through all the pitches. And, uh, and then we'll announce our winners. And we'll, then I'll be out of here by then. Okay, so I mentioned all those judging criteria. So I'm going to go back through uh, just uh, really quickly again. So the big first one, validation. You have to validate. So they're literally going to think in their minds, the judges, while they're thinking, did they actually talk to customers? If you didn't, red flag, right? So you have to be solving a problem. Anything out there is solving a problem. Now, I'm going to give you advice as a product guy. If I'm a product guy, that's what I do by trade. I'm a product strategist, right? So by trade, I, I, I tell everybody this. The key to being a successful product manager, which you guys are going to be for this weekend, is not to fixate on a solution. So when you guys come up tonight, you're going to be pitching a solution. You have 60 seconds like, I've noticed this problem, and this is a great solution. Everybody come join my team. And you're going to do that, and hopefully you're, you're successful in that, right? Um, but no matter what, anything you're doing out there, even if it's a video game, is solving some type of problem. So uh, the, the, the advice to you is to fixate throughout the course of the weekend on the problem that you're solving and not the solution because if you go out and talk to customers and you find out that your solution is wrong and you've never really been thinking about the product, I mean sorry, the problem, and you're kind of done because they didn't like your idea. But if the problem is real, you get out and you talk to customers and you find out that the problem is real and then you start talking about your solution and it doesn't really resonate there, right? You can still fall back on, okay, I learned that that solution isn't right, but the problem is. You're still in the game. Okay? I've seen teams at more than one startup weekend have major pivots, like what they pitched on Friday night 
was not what they were working on Saturday at noon. Even had one that was like Saturday night. They had to completely change their idea. One of them found out that there was a cut, that there was a competitor who had just launched. Another one just found out their idea was ridiculous. But uh, it happens all the time, right? So uh, that's that's okay. Pivoting is good. Remember, but make sure you're solving a problem. And of course, if you're talking to customers, you're solving a problem. You're doing it to somebody, right? So have you identified a specific target market? To whom? Are you, mar are you going to market your product? For whom is your product? All right. Second thing is execution and design. This is what you're going to spend a lot of your time doing this weekend. This is the actual do. So I'm going to tell you something here. It's the brutal truth. Whatever idea you pitch tonight is worthless. And that's true. That sounds terrible to say. But it's worthless because there are 7 billion people on the planet and you're not the first person to have it. Everybody has ideas all the time. But there are two kinds of people in the world. There's entrepreneurs. Those are the people who go out and do it. Then there are wantrepreneurs. Those are people who say, I have this great idea. I should do that someday. But you guys are all here, so you're clearly not those people, right? So this is about doing. Two people are going to have the same idea. Are you going to do it better than them? And that's what the weekend's all about, is that execution. Have you actually built something, right? How, how functional is it? Some people kill it in this. If you have a developer on your team, you guys can crank out something that's real. Simple, but real in the course of the weekend if you happen to have developed. If you don't, do a prototype. If you don't have that, do designs. But how functional is what you've got there? And design is relevant. Don't get too caught up on it, but design is, is relevant. All of this is also online, and we'll, we'll send this to you um, as well by the email address that you registered. Okay, so is your product easy to use? The third and last one is the business model, right? Because this is about businesses that judges are going to judge on validation because that's how they know that your idea is real. They're going to judge you on execution because they have to know, like, in the real world, when you get investment in a company, what they're betting on is a team. They're betting on your idea is real, it's solving a real problem, and that you are the people to do it, right? So execution. But at the end of the day, is it going to make money? Right? Is it going to make money? So do you have a plan to make it a successful business? That's the important part there. Are you solving a problem, right? Uh, again, we talked about that problem thing. So what is your value proposition to your customers? It's all kinds of terms that we can throw out to you here. Again, this is all on you. You have coaches. You have me here the whole weekend. So um, ask all the questions you want and figure that out. But value proposition. And then is your idea unique, right? Don't, don't tell me you're creating Facebook um, or something like that, it's particularly since Facebook's kind of run out of market here. OK, so that's that. Um, there we go. So we've come to the real moment of the night, which is our uh, our pitching, our actual pitching. So here's how this is going to work. All right. So you're going to come up. Uh, you're gonna, everybody wants to pitch. Is just going to get in a big old line, and you're going to have 60 seconds to pitch on stage. I will cut you off. I swear. I will cut you off. So 60 seconds to uh, to pitch your idea, right? And once you go, so you're going to go up here. You're going to have the microphone. I don't like microphones. But you guys like microphones. So you don't have to shout at me. But if you, uh, I'm just loud. But if you're going to come up, you're going to do a pitch. And when you're done, you're going to go over here where we're going to get your name on a piece of poster board. Okay? So it's going to, uh, your, co your, your uh, company. We're going to get your company name on a piece of poster board. And then you're going to go somewhere in the room and just hang that up on the wall. Be respectful to the property here, but hang that on the wall using a little bit of tape. So now we have your company name that's somewhere sitting up there, right? So that's, that's really, really important. We're going to have a voting process and everything else that happens out of it. That's what we're preparing for. Okay, I'm going to explain all of that after everybody, after everybody pitches so we don't have to do it again because I know all of your minds are getting nervous and focused on this, so we're not, I'm not going to expect you to remember that. We're going to get into it, but just remember, you're going to get in line, 60 seconds to pitch, I'll cut you off, and uh, make sure that you tell the organization, make sure you tell Brian the name of your company, and make sure you tell everybody here too because they have to remember it, the 20 pitches that we're going to have here. Okay, it's super important and then hang on the wall, okay? Um, so we're gonna talk about a few more things related to, to pitching. So but before I tell you how to make a good pitch, uh, here's a couple of questions that everybody asks every single time, so much so the tech star just said, you know what, let's just put it in the deck. So we're gonna go through, one, can I pitch something I've already started on? No, this is for, this is for new ideas. Now, the, if you have an idea that you've been kicking around for a long time and you've researched it a ton, you have all kinds of notes or whatever, groovy. If you already have like a website, a product out there, not so much. This is, this is, for, this is for new ideas. If you have a question on whether or not it counts, I'm, I'm the adjudicator. So you know, just come to me and ask. Um, we, we, uh, all right? Okay. Can you pitch two ideas? No. No one likes a show off, so pick one. And also, I, can, I guarantee you don't have two billion dollar ideas. So which one do you think is the, is the best one? 
what if my idea isn't selected? So I mentioned there's going to be a voting process, right? We have a limited number of people. Most of you are going to pitch. We can't have everybody's ideas being worked on. So there is the distinct possibility that the idea you pitch won't form a team. And that's actually not a big because that's not what The Weekend's about. You're doing everything that The Weekend's about. You got up and pitched, and I give you mad props for doing so. And then, you still got to do everything else. You're gonna learn how to validate that, how to work on that idea, how, what makes a successful company, and learn all of that by doing so. Even if your idea isn't pitched, this is all over Sunday. Sunday night, 8 p.m., you go home, and you're like, damn it, I'm starting my business, right? So it doesn't really matter. So um, it's not really about the idea, it's about the process. Um, can, if your idea isn't selected, can you still work on it? Yeah, we'll make an exception, but you have to get somebody else on. You have to get somebody else on your team. One person doing this is just too much work. It's, it's you only have 54 hours, right, to do this. It's just way too much work. So get at least someone else on your team and understand. That even if you only have two on your team, you're a little bit handicapped. Okay? You want like three, four people on your team to really be successful. But if you want to take that chance and you can get somebody else to hop on board, then uh, you know more power to you. All right. Lastly, um, can you can you use any props like when you're pitching tonight? Um, you can use a prop or something, but we're not going to give you slides. We just don't have the time, right? Everybody's going to pitch. It's 60 seconds. Just come up here and and uh, and make a good pitch. What makes a good pitch? So here's an example. Do this however you want, but if you don't know, if you're still stewing in your brain how you're going to get this idea out there, here's a good thing. Hi, my name is JDM, and the problem I want to solve is something. My solution to that problem is blank. And to do this this weekend, I'm going to need a designer, developer, what, what am I going to need in order to get this done? And then you got to get people that want to be on your team, right? you got to get people that not only interested in your idea, but interested in you. So let your personality shine through a little bit. If it were me or basically anybody who chooses the weird volunteer work of being a startup weekend facilitator, we'll probably have something like Let's Rock this weekend, but you don't have to be nearly so lame. But be yourself um, and let yourself shine through, all right? So if you don't know how you want to structure it, there you go. That's the anatomy of a good pitch. You said who you are, right? You can say the name of your company, which would be there too. Say the problem you're solving. Say the solutions you're giving. Say what you need, right? Because everybody else is listening about, and if their idea isn't chosen or they didn't pitch, they're going to need to be on a team. So make sure you have to ask for what you need. Ask for the resources that you need. Okay. Um, we're going to get more into all of that selection process afterward, but we are at now the moment of truth. So everybody who wants to pitch, and I hope I just see these bleachers clear out, um, <laughs> come up and um, we're going to stand in line over here, actually. There's this formal line right along here. Look at this angel is powering to the front of the line. You guys are all looking at that. I know. Come on. Yeah.
Yeah. Are you filming right now? Yeah. Oh, you are? So, I was sure we weren't supposed to leave the name and anything you built on it. Sure. And just know, because you like you really attached to the idea of the idea of Okay, I don't like it. My voice is so different on this thing. It feels really weird. Um, okay, so um, let's see if we can get some more people online. I think a couple of you could really pitch. Can I? Are you? Sh everybody, point to somebody and say peer pressure. Can we wait to get in line until the line dies down? Peer pressure. I'm in line. All right, all right. Not not everybody is a winner. No, I'm kidding. Okay, so we're going to get started here. Remember, it's 60 seconds. I'm going to cut you off. But Nancy's going to be kind enough to hold up a piece of paper that says 15 seconds when you could probably figure it out. You have 15 seconds left. Okay? So every time, uh, at every startup weekend, people go, try to go over the time because, you know, you hard, right, and you're not maybe paying attention to the exact time or whatever, and I am going to cut you off. So if you want to get all your stuff out, when you see that 15 seconds, get out whatever was left that you needed, okay? And also remember to have fun, because this is, this is fun. Okay, without further ado, we good? Yeah! This work, you guys need work. Okay. Well, Angel's first in line, so come on up, Angel. Um, as soon as you start talking, I'm going to start the timer. Okay. Hi, my name is Angel, and I want to build online family fitness website. In 2011, both of my parents were in the ICU dying of heart failure. One was in Georgia, and the other was in Maryland. If you were me, who would you go visit first? This is a decision I wouldn't want for anyone, and no one should have to, because 80% of disease is curable by lifestyle and fitness alone. I'm looking for a few rebels who want to disrupt the healthcare and fitness industries by building the world's first family-based fitness website. I'm looking to build a website that allows you to tell us about your family. You have someone with Asperger's, a parent with heart disease, and we'll build with, for you a custom workout every day that you do as a family unit. So if you're a photographer, you do websites, I've got a GoPro camera and a credit card. Come join my team and let's make something beautiful. Hey, my name is Christian Birch. I'm a teacher, and I've been teaching natural resources in Marika. I have no business business experience, but uh, I see a need in the Mount Shasta and Siskiyou County area for. Um, I'm an avid outdoorsman, so I see a need for a mountain bike shuttle business, as well as a hiking shuttle business, as well as a custom adventure consulting business. Um, I've been all over the country. Uh, I love mountain biking. 
I've been to Oak Ridge, Oregon and Downeyville, both of which are the same size as Mount Shasta, and their economy has um, been boosted tremendously by mountain bikes, uh, mountain bike adventure companies. So I would like to bring a, that company to Mount Shasta, and uh, I hope I need some marketing. I need some um, social media help. I need some. Uh, I need a website, and uh, I'm excited to do this. I just think it'll be great, bring great business to Mount Shasta and Siskiyou County. My name is Jason Loam. Do you guys know what Loam means? Good dirt. Hi, my name is Elias, and I'm the CEO of Dream Print, a 3D printing, laser engraving, custom service. Everyone in this room has an imagination, whether it be cute or terrifying. With our business, you can use that crazy imagination to create a product that will leave you satisfied and that you can hold in your hand. DreamPrint takes custom orders over our website to make your dreams turn into reality. Whether you want a 3D printed phone case or a custom engraved keychain, we've got you covered. We plan on averaging our prices by the material it takes and the time it takes to create the products. There will also be a small shipping fee that we'll be using from the website we plan on creating. We plan to sell our product at an affordable price, which will benefit us as well as our customers. We will do everything in our power to make our business successful. Don't be mean, invest in the dream. I have a question for you. Have you ever been in the grocery store and been overwhelmed by the chemical smell of cleaning products? Well, EcoFresh has a solution. We make a non-toxic carpet freshener from essential oils and not synthesized chemicals. Our target audience is young adults that want affordable and all-natural eco-friendly like you, like my friend Ben was saying. And we are trying to do that. Great job. I'm going to start when you start. Hi, everybody. I'm Morgan Miller. I'm Tilia Nudie. And I'm Natalie Haugen. And we are the colors of Vintage Toys. Vintage Toys is a revolutionizing business that takes modern family styles and incorporates an older style heritage. Our goal is to bring back the meaning to tangible toys without batteries. Our classic toys are quality guaranteed and will stay in the family for decades. Generations today don't pay attention to family heirlooms. Instead, they care about how many followers they have on social media, and we hope to change that. Vintage toy company Age Group targets ranges from baby to, babies to adults. Our company targets young families with young children, and we hope to expand our toy line into older, mature audiences. Our company produces quality toys that aren't like that of the modern era. They're strong, durable, and ecologically sustainable. Our business would also offer a personal customization option so that families can make our toy their own. Vintage toys, designed for fun. Engineered to last. Okay. Hi, I'm Barbara Wagner, and I'm looking to solve the air pollution problem in Mount Shasta by figuring out why so few students, or only a few students, ride their bikes to school or walk to school. So to solve that, I will need a team of people to interview the students at the school and their parents as well to see why they have a vested interest in bringing their kids to school by car. 
and what is the barriers to entry for kids to ride their bike to school or to walk and to use alternative cuts. <coughs> statistics of how many people are dying throughout the world, partly and mainly because of their bad choices in diet. It's not really about exercise I found out recently, it's about what you put inside yourself. So my solution is to create an application that runs on popular cell phones like iOS and Android that guides you through a process in educating you about what, what's in the food you actually eat and helps you make better choices to live a healthier, longer and more sustainable life. Uh, to, to accomplish that, I need some people that like to talk to people and, uh, and are good with photography and, and web design and, and, and video to try and bring in those elements into the app to really engage uh, with, the, with the customer. So thank you. Hi, my name is Jonathan. Um, what I would like to do, uh, non-profits waste an incredible amount of money on their administrative costs and organizing their systems. So what I'd like to do is bring a, uh, an easily replicable uh, software solution to uh, organizations um, in order to amplify the mission of these non-profits by taking out all the, uh, all the chaos in their operations. And uh, I'm already starting on this process. <laughs> And uh, I already have four clients, and I'm hoping to uh, bring this to a much larger audience. Uh, so that's what I got right now. Everybody hear me all right? Uh, thanks. Yeah, my name is Roger Gifford. Uh, I've spent a number of years in the no, live trades and have worked in structures. Um, one of the problems that I've saw and everybody saw for the last few years is the huge amount of wasted fuels that have been just causing damage and pollution. And what I have is uh, been working on a system that's designed to convert wood fuels and other fuels and garbage into hydrogen. Um, the company name that I've started with is Freedom Fuel, and uh, the purpose is to be able to harvest uh, and prevent all of the wasted fuels that are being burned up in the forest by utilizing them and allowing people to actually run their uh, generators and create heat and fuels and uh, see it as a system that will be affordable and uh, on the regular level to Charity. Right. Okay. Don't do that. 
Um, so my name is Colleen Shelley, and I'm a mom with two sons at Sisson Elementary School. Um, the problem we have is students have been wanting fresh and healthy and natural food, um, but there's no kitchen at Sisson for the whole Mount Shasta School District. So getting a salad bar is out of the question because there's no sink to wash the lettuce. Um, imagine this. Let me put you in a sixth grade classroom and the spelling list is based on the ingredients in the lunch. So, your first word class is hexametaphosphate. Can you use it in a sentence? Yes, this is a preservative that is known to cause pancreatic cancer in rats. Let's change the vocabulary of words in our kids, um, on our kids' spelling test. Words like, hmm, natural, perishable would be good and organic um, the school needs this it's going to take the community to do it and eat well. all right i'm module this is my dad mark and we represent the tabutu group and our main, fo uh, main focus is creating jobs without losing them by repurposing products. Uh, things that originally tended to do something, and we've come up with a creative process to uh, build a new product, a secondary market. Uh, by creating jobs without losing them, you can still have a manufacturing company that whatever they are building that thing for, they can now add an additional department product line, assembly line for that product. Uh, for example, hurry, hurry, hurry. <laughs> seconds, uh, countdown. Something as simple as a neck brace that we've come up with. Uh, something cool and unique, not some big bulky cotton pad. Sorry, yeah, we'll do this 15 seconds. This is just one thing that we do. So uh, we like people that want to be creative and are open-minded to things like that. Jun because I love the bees. What this is is the most amazing effervescent um, organic and um, light uh, fizzy drink. A great soda replacement and it's like a cousin to kombucha. It's made with organic honey and tea and a Jun culture which is from Tibet. It's really high in probiotics too. So what I find is that people um, love uh, drinking something that they know is really healthy for them as opposed to sodas. And they also know that they're, uh, with, with the purchase of the future PB's John, they are helping the bees thrive because all of the honey will be purchased from apiaries that are protecting the bees and helping them thrive. The, the bottling will be sustainable, you know, no plastics to, to keep trashing everywhere, and pods all across the country with apiaries. Yeah. Last call. Okay. okay. Such are the ideas for, uh, for the weekend. Um, logos. Okay. So now let's uh, talk about the voting process, all right? So this is going to happen in kind of two, uh, two stages. So this is really about networking right now. You're trying to recruit potential people for your team. You're trying to see who uh, whose team you might want to be on, even if only as a backup to your own if you pitch, and all of that stuff, okay? So you're going to have to, you may have to bribe people. Like, that's just the way that it goes. But everybody should have three dots probably missed a couple of you, but does everybody have three dots? No. Okay, so you guys are going to have a little bit of time. We're, we're getting a little late here, so we'll probably only do about 20 minutes and then uh, to talk. So walk around the room. You have the, the businesses are all up here on the wall. See who people are. Uh, see who you might want to work with. We're not, we're not done yet. Don't do it yet. 
All right, guys, let's, let's gather back a second. Hey, John, yeah, we're up to Clap once if you can hear me. Clap twice if you can hear me. Clap three times if you can hear me. Okay, so we're not going to do that quite yet. Now, that was, that was my mistake. I should have said that before I started the sentence. But, um, so remember, you're, you're going to spend time networking. You're going to be talking to people, recruiting on a team. Why do you want them on your team? Whose team might you want to be on? Do all that. Talk to, talk to everybody and recruit whatever skills that you need, okay? So we're going to do that, all right? And while you're doing that, all of you have those three dots. Those are votes. So you can vote for any idea or ideas that you can that you want. You can vote three on the same one, you can vote two on one and one on another, or one on three separate ideas. But those are your votes. And so that's gonna be important in a minute because we can't do everybody's idea. There's just not enough people in the room. So the, the ones with the highest numbers of dots are going to be the teams um, that, that we form around, okay? So we're gonna come back and explain how all that works. But for now, spend the next 15 to 20 minutes Recruiting those dots and figuring out who you might want to work with. Are we allowed to vote for our own? You are allowed to vote for your own. But keep in mind, if everybody votes for it, I'm just going to make a call myself. If you all vote for your own, it's going to be a tie. I'm the tie. All right, go for it. <laughs> All right. So uh, the votes have been tallied. They are they are in. Uh, based on the number of participants, we had to unfortunately cut the list down to only seven teams. So, um, but I do want to remind before before we go any further again, this is not about the idea. The idea is just a starting point from which to work on everything else. Okay. So everybody's going to learn a ton and have a great time. And uh, I guarantee you what I, what I talk about next is going to make you feel a little bit um, better if, you're, if your idea didn't get, didn't get chosen. So here is the list of the items that formed, uh, that fit in the top seven. Now, I do, I do want to call out the, the um, I forget, I, that's, oh, I just dropped the ball, the name of the, the drink. The fizzy drink? Phoebe's. Phoebe's done. Phoebe's. So you were actually the highest rated. But it's an existing idea and it didn't gotcha. fit in the rules. Yeah. So that was like. <coughs> <laughs> uh, but I did want to call it out because you did actually have the highest rated notes. Thanks, you guys. So, but these are the these are now the teams for the weekend. So we'll take those uh, posters or, or you guys can make new ones. And you guys are going to end up not yet, but you're going to end up uh, picking a place to camp uh, for, uh, who's sleep please, uh, for, uh, for the weekend where you guys can work on um, your ideas and form teams. So I want to talk a little bit about uh, what's, what you're going to do right now, okay? So now it's time to form teams, okay? So these seven ideas are eligible to form teams. Remember, you need um, at least two people on the team, but I want to, I want to say this. Um, two is the bare minimum. I won't go below it. Uh, it's just too hard for one person. Really, really try for three. Now the problem is that with the number that we have, that's going to be pretty, uh, pretty tight. Um, so you know, things end up lopsided or whatever. Uh, I may have to step in and you know ask teams to merge or like to go uh, help you shill, uh, help be your shill for uh, finding finding more people. But try to really get at least three people on your team. Um, okay, so. Uh, what actually forms a, a good team? You guys know what you need, right? Most of you asked in your pitch for exactly what you needed. So think about it. These are the kinds of things that uh, your, your random, typical team tends to need. They need somebody who's a little bit technical. They need somebody who knows that industry. That's probably the person who pitched. Then uh, they have somebody with some business knowledge and somebody who's maybe a little bit creative. That's like the ideal team is to get those skill sets on your team. Okay? Um, so, um, I just want to throw out there some things, and uh, Chad and Todd spoke a little bit about this, but this is a very real statistic. So most startups fail. And uh, what I heard once uh, told me about a guy named Sunny Mayuba, who's a Sacramento entrepreneur who made it big with an app called Waiter. Um, he once told me that, the, uh, that when he tells people, oh, I'm going to go start a startup, what everybody should hear is that I am, I, I'm going to go work on a business 
And I'm going to work harder than I've ever worked before, for longer hours than I've ever worked before, for something that two years from now probably isn't going to exist. Um, and that's kind of a harsh thing. So entrepreneurs <coughs> are a special breed. Everybody in this room, we're entrepreneurs, we're a special breed of people. Um, but of that big rate of failure, most of it comes from team issues. That's the biggest source of failure in entrepreneurs that come from those team issues. There's another great quote, I'm blanking on the author right now, um, but it was said that most startups aren't murdered by the marketplace, they commit suicide. And that means that it's all about execution. Like startups aren't killed because Google comes in and like releases a product because they got all this money. Those big companies don't go after these ideas. Why? Because they're not proven yet. Customer development versus product development. So they're not, these companies kill themselves by team issues, by not executing well, by whatever. So, well, you guys all did that networking thing, this is where it's gonna pay off. Okay, diverse skills. And remember this last one. So at the end of the day, somebody probably has to make a call if you have an even number of people and there's no other way to decide. Somebody's gonna have to say, sorry team, here's the direction that we're going. But remember, this isn't about like somebody being CEO and being like, okay, I'm just gonna tell everybody what they need to do and they're gonna all go do it and I'm gonna be the team leader. No, it's a startup. Everybody's gonna wear many, many different hats. Um, so so keep, keep that in mind. Um, Let's see, what else? Okay, so I'm gonna let you guys loose and I'm gonna walk around and make sure that we get that team balance, right? So we get that right number of people on all of the teams. Um, so uh, things that I want you guys to, to make sure that you do. So your sign is probably decimated, that's my fault, um, because I stacked them with tape on top of each other. But, um, so make a new sign if yours got completely destroyed. Make sure you put your team name on it um, and your, your problem on there, and at least the, you know, the number of team members or something, just make a sign with that. And um, I said pick an area, I already said that. Make sure you find a place in here that you guys have been working for the weekend. We can be a little flexible with it, maybe set up a table away from, um, away from these main ones if we, if we want to. And um, then again, do that brain dump and figure out what you're gonna accomplish this weekend. And then get some sleep because it's gonna be a really, really long weekend. So the, the seven of you who Represent these ideas. Go ahead and come on up here because that's what people are probably going to remember the faces. Okay, great. So, um, you guys know what to do. You have your action items. Go ahead and form teams. You, you guys are the leaders. You have to go form teams. Let me get, oh wait, so you mean we have to have the people join our team, right? Well, I don't, I don't know how many you want. Okay, three is a great number. You want to find a fourth or five? Four is, the, four is the most ideal number for starting. Three is doable. They're all going to be super busy. Six. Too many. So we need six. Yeah. Like you said, either you use your of Cisco Startup Weekend, the very first one. Can I hear a whoop? Whoop! Excellent, excellent. I can't tell you how excited I am to be here and for everybody else to be here and see exactly what transpired over just 48 hours of working together. I think everyone here is going to be super impressed. How many have actually been to a Startup Weekend final night pitch before? Okay, so we have a few of you who know what to expect. The rest of you are, I guarantee you, are in for a real treat. Okay. 
So we're going to get started just by thanking uh, a few people. And uh, The first thing, for those of you who don't know me, I'm a facilitator. So uh, I'm a volunteer who Techstars, the company that puts on Startup Weekends, selects to come in and help out during the course of Startup Weekend, having some experience in those. But uh, I was just here for the weekend. These are the real people who actually made this happen. Can I get them to stand up and give them a round of applause? I may not have organized this one, but I've organized others, and until you do it, you really don't know how much work it is. And none of them got paid for it either. So we really, really owe them our thanks for putting this on. But they're not the only ones because throughout the course of the weekend, the teams got access to these great coaches and mentors to help them answer any business questions that they need. Because you guys have to remember, for those of you who weren't here for this process, that these, that these people, these participants showed up on Friday with nothing but an idea. They pitched it for 60 seconds. They had to convince their teammates to join with them. They had to go pitch and get it out there and then get votes and then form teams and then work all weekend to go toward the pitches you guys are going to see tonight. And these guys helped them out along the way. Can we give them a round of applause? This wouldn't work without other local sponsors, so I'm going to let Nancy address the proper thanks, as she is a local and I am an out of town. <laughs> well, we're just really appreciative. It was, um, you saw the organizing team, and we also tried to work to pull in all the resource agencies that serve business owners and startups and our local economy, like the Small Business Development Center and Siskiyou Economic Development Council, and Chambers have been a part of this. Um, you may have seen on the Facebook page, all of you participants, but there were four cities that sent in proclamations saying go, go, go. And so um, this, the reason this team wanted to host an event like this wasn't because we read the manual of the event at all, but more that um, there was something about it that said startup culture. Something about it that said what's really important are bringing any idea and any concept of a business to some level of fruition. That's what our future depends on in this community and tapping people of all ages. If you look around this room, that is certainly all ages. We really wanted to be in support of that. The folks who got the um, logos up here all contributed some kind of financial support, uh, including Ford Family Foundation, Pacific Power, Tri-Counties, and Scott Valley Banks, the Mount Shasta Rotary Club, Mount Shasta Engineering printed up our posters, and then um, in addition to being um, providing expertise throughout the evening, we also got some funding for some of the food from the Centers for International, well, it's actually the Far Northern Center for International Trade and Development. So um, this room has been thinking locally and globally, and we're really appreciative. Thank you. Okay, now I know all of the teams are getting super anxious because they're about to have a little pressure thrown on them, but it's important, I think, to understand from whom that pressure is coming. So uh, I, want to, <laughs> I want to give each of the judges a chance to stand up and say for 30 seconds, a minute, who they are, where they're coming from, and why they chose to be a judge here. Start down there. <laughs> Hello, I'm Lexi Meadows, and I'm a realtor at Forest Loss Realty. Um, I'm really excited to be here because this is the type of program that I was involved in in high school, and um, I actually won a business competition, kind of like what you guys are doing, and it really inspired me and helped me <coughs> become really business minded and started my venture into where I am now. So I'm excited to see what you all have in store for us and um, just really happy that you're participating. That's a first step. <laughs> so thank you. Well, hello, my name is Elizabeth and I am super delighted to have been invited to do this. That is why I'm here because I was invited to 
participate in Startup Weekend. I actually had a couple of ideas myself, but I was excluded from uh, pitching um, as a judge. Anyway, I currently am running a local small business. Um, on some days it's running me, and I also run a local nonprofit organization. Uh, I have actually had involvement in four startups, three of which are still running, and one uh, was a transition. So it's not running, but it's assets passed on and um, continues in a different form. So I love startup, so I'm super, super excited to see what you want to get started. I think our future is absolutely in the hands of people willing to try something new, and our old economic structures are falling away, and we need to create some new energy and new ways to uh, live our lives. Um, not so much retail-based, but um, using creative energies. So thank you for all your energy this weekend. Hello, I'm Sean Bollock, a local filmmaker. I grew up here in Mount Shasta, class of 06, go Bears. Uh, the <coughs> Tiger Fight song kind of threw me off, though. That's kind of done to me. There's swagger. Oh, yeah. no, I'm not calling, all, calling out or anything. But, uh, ended up going, I, I mentioned I wasn't a local, right? Are you guys heard that? I'm not pointing any fingers. But, you know, uh, it, was, it was rad to be asked to come in and represent and kind of provide some perspective of, of where uh, the local economy is going and ended up going to film school down in Santa Cruz. Uh, just finished up as the creative director over at GoPro for their branded partnerships division. So we did projects from uh, Tour de France to Wimbledon, <coughs> worked with Ford, uh, Red Bull, and it's uh, a rad opportunity to come out here and talk to you guys and see what kind of ideas you've cooked up and 100% uh, agree with the other judges that the whole kind of future is reliant on people coming up with new ideas. So if it's something that you're not sure about, you have to fail before you're going to succeed, and I've failed plenty of times, so take it from me that if yeah. you don't win this time and you don't reach to whatever goals you've set, 100% you've got to come back with even more hunger than you did before. So I look forward to seeing what you guys have for us. Hi, I'm Jeff Harkness. I, um, I, I have... Uh, a business partner and I run Pacific Private Wealth Services out of Guayrica in, in Sacramento. Um, it uh, provides wealth management and, and financial advising. The reason why I'm here today is, is uh, really it started about four years ago uh, through my service on city council. Uh, it was really during that time that it really hit how important economic development is and how many different types of economic development activities there are. And one of those is startups and um, startups generating new ideas, developing those ideas and creating new businesses is, is fundamental to that. So I've uh, continued to be act active in, in this process and bringing it here and it's, and it's uh, wonderful to be a part of the final day and uh, be here today as a judge. So good luck to you all. Really look forward to hearing the ideas. Uh, I think I know most of you, but not all of you. And um, my name is Nancy Swift, and um, hopefully you've all heard of Jedi in some form or another. Uh, a nonprofit here. I'm one of the community members uh, that founded this organization to help people start and grow businesses as a means for them to thrive, stay here, uh, support their families, and build our local economy. So uh, what I do also fits right with why I'm so excited to be here. And um, we don't always get to work with kids in high school, so it's been fascinating for me mm -hmm. to watch the high schoolers process. So I love the diversity of the whole weekend. I'm excited for you. I'm excited for your presentations and the looks on your faces. Everybody smile. It's okay. <laughs> and uh, I did bring my daughter Mesky here to sit up with me. We're going to be one vote, but um, bringing in the new entrepreneurs, <laughs> giving her exposure to the process. Thank you. I also uh, meant to acknowledge that we have um, Giovanni here from the Mount Shasta Herald. 
And he is um, recording our session, but he also would love to hear from you. So after the presentations, if you'll just go up and talk to him about what was fun, what wasn't fun, why you like this, why you like to be a coach, a mentor, why you do you didn't like that flavor of pizza, whatever it is, give him something, <laughs> give him your opinion. Um, he's looking for some themes and um, understanding of what you've been through over the last couple days. So, thank you. Okay, another round for the judges. Okay, now everybody's learned about all of the people involved behind the scenes here, so it's time to learn about the participants. And I can think of no better way to do that than the pitches, except maybe this one. Come on! For those of you, for those of you who weren't here Friday night, that probably looks really weird. So I'm not going to explain it. <laughs> so I want to talk just a little bit about, uh, very briefly, since um, the judges and participants already know all of this, uh, about what, they're, what we're judging uh, the teams on tonight. Judging is probably not the most fair word for this. What we really are doing is uh, that we, somebody has to win, somebody has to come in second, and somebody has to come in third place. But really, this is the target that everybody was trying to hit the weekend. And I think everybody did a phenomenal job. This was a fantastic startup weekend. From ideas alone, throughout the course of 48 hours, everybody here, people from 14 to ages upon which I shall not speculate, had to engage on all three of these subjects. They had to validate by talking to customers, by getting out of the building and figuring out, do people really want this product? Or do they want something similar to this product? They had to figure out what they were gonna build. And then they actually had to go and build something. They had to create something from nothing in just two days. And then they had to figure out how the heck they could make money with all of that. All in the course of 48 hours, those three things came from a 60 second pitch, nothing else, to what you guys are about to see today. So here's how this is essentially gonna work. So each team is gonna get five minutes to do their pitch. I will be aggressive with the timer and cutting everybody off. Um, so five minutes, five minutes, five minutes, and then three minutes for Q&A from our illustrious panel of judges. During that Q&A, you will see the next team in line during that Q&A will be coming up and getting their technology ready. So uh, just ignore, hopefully that'll happen quietly and smoothly, just ignore that. We'll focus on the questions and answers that are happening from the judges. We have a mic uh, for the judges to use over there. It is off, make sure you turn it on and off between each Q&A session. And we have a microphone here for the teams to use. You don't have to use it, as you can see. I have no trouble being loud, but uh, for most people, a microphone is probably a good idea. Okay, but more importantly, more than anything, have fun. Okay, this is a fun process. You may not realize it yet, but you're all going to look back on this after you're done. Maybe not right after, but an hour later or a day later or a month later, you look back and say, man, that was fun, and I'm going to do it again. Okay, so make sure you have fun. These are the five teams that are pitching tonight. Freedom Fuel, InfoTag, Wojia Vintage Toys, and Lunch Lady Food Truck. So, without further ado, Let's hear from Freedom Fuel. Yeah. It'll start when you start talking, but let me go ahead and put this live first. So remember, you're controlling it from the space bar project. You remember that? The space bar? Yeah. Okay, where's my key? That's your key. Okay. Um, so, oh, and I hit it already. When you go back, hit the left pitches. arrow. Left arrow. Uh, very good. Thank you. Okay. Um, Freedom Fuel. What it is is we have discovered that this huge problem of out of control forest fires, and the state's finally coming around to it also, to start to do preventative measures and remove the fuels. Well, normally they stack them up and burn them, and there they go, up in smoke again. Oh, thank you. And um, what we intended to do and had worked on this weekend was to start to implement a use for them 
in the uh, aspect in the aspect of being able to convert that wood fuel into hydrogen and um, in home sized units. Um, it's not new technology, it's been around for a long time. This is an example, I pulled this off of the state's website of already procured contracts and you can see on the bottom line there, $1,183,900. Basically it was paid for a modular bio, bio power system that they're already working on doing the same type of thing. Currently, this was another one, I uh, can't even read it hardly, but this was um, fire protection services, and what it was was um, basically 323000 for employing goats to remove the fuels. And um, this was a more refined aspect, I didn't know how it would show up on here, of the first contract and more refined information. I can hardly read it from here. <clears throat> okay, so going into uh, the problem that we're going to solve and what we want to take it to is to be able to create basically the same thing as a wood stove, but it isn't in the house. It's an exterior unit. Um, it uses the fuels, including the fuels that you can gather around your house to convert them into hydrogen to run an electric generator, produces a lot of heat that you can pipe into the house and use it for the heating system. The cost currently figured for the amount of wood you would use to be about 40 cents a kilowatt is my projections. And that is more efficiently used because the heating costs aren't involved in that calculation, which would mitigate that down to almost what the power companies would be charging. Um, and you can also feed it yourself without having to have the fuel. Um, this is an example of a downdraft gas fire that actually is a prototype. I built one and ran it really efficient and they're neat because they'll just eat about everything, including your garbage. And they produce nothing more than water and CO2. These are just another example of the design. They were built years ago when there was a fuel shortage in Europe. Um, another design on it. Um, so in order to take the business into a place where I see it being able to project itself and carry itself would be as a contractor going after some of these projects that are going to be available for the biomass reductions capturing these fuels and reselling them and then putting out a number of gasification units so that we start to create a resource that needs to use that kind of fuel in an easy convenient way to distribute it and to get it to people so they have those facilities. Um, with the establishment of that system, we create a major local independence from the fluctuations of the account, economic situation that we always have felt from oil going up and down and the big changes. <clears throat> it also is complementary to solar design because the switching equipment already in solar systems, generally that are online, will allow the feedback of electricity into the grid and also uh, give you credits or even money back for the energy you produce and not use at the time you're heating with it. Is it unique? No, it's not unique at all. This has been around since the 1800s. Why hasn't it been implemented? Well, there's always a lot of political influence when somebody's looking at having to um, lose some of their um, ways, but we need to change. We've got a resource up here that's not being used and it's time to take it. It's time to integrated into our system and use those fuels instead of waste. Hi, I have a question. Yes. Um, what is your proposal on how you gather the fuels? What, what is the uh, gathering part, part, of, part of my design would be to, once the contracts were procured to have some of the existing manufacturers 
modify their equipment to be able to vacuum it up and turn it into pulp and transport it back to a main facility on the road or in a close location. And then the distribution, I had an idea that you could either package it up and sell it to prepaid people that ordered it or even have them come pick it up on site. Kind of piggybacking on her question, would you see that uh, gathering of those resources, I'm assuming you're meaning thinning of the forests, correct, in terms of pulling out a lot of that dead debris? Yeah, the state's implementing plans for already creating huge fire breaks, and they just need to be done correctly and managed, not just torn up. So would there be, uh, would, would this uh, idea be working with like a, a federal BLM or something like that in terms of land management that would then be like a, a third party contract that would basically you'd be purchasing the yeah that's what I can see happening I've been watching the state as a contractor myself they're changing the top levels of Cal Fire right now to prevention they're actually soliciting people to go that direction so it's heading that way and this uh, other contract that you saw that was over a million dollars is the ground of somebody getting in on it in the beginning. What happens generally with the biofuels they use now in these sawmills and plants? They take these trees, cut them down, strip all the limbs off and chip the tree and leave the rest of it there. We're talking about taking it all in the area that is going to be the break, you know, leaving the healthy plants and enough vegetation there to contain that spray and doing it in a manageable way. Can you tell me a little bit about uh, how this compares with some of our current technology, like wood stoves that, that are pretty common in this area, um, and what type of regulatory or environmental approvals that you may get need in order to move forward with this idea? Well, this idea actually is a publication. If you want to send me an email um, and anybody wants a card, I will be able to um, pass that PDF on. The Department of Energy created it. The pollution is nil. It only produces water and CO2 as burnt hydrogen after it does its work with cleaning and stripping the wood. Um, the neat thing about it is the unit sits outside, so it'd be in a concrete area that was protected. It'd have a little less um, exposure to than a barbecue would. And the neat thing about it is piping the hot water in prevents a fire. And prevents fire. I am Alexis Ramirez. And I'm Kimberly Rubio. And we are the creators of InfoCat. I'd like to ask you a question. Have you ever lost something extremely valuable to you that you just wish you can have the possibility of having it back? And we have the solution for you. Let's face it. Property is lost and property is stolen. Regular tags you use to keep track of your property are flimsy, ugly, and way too revealing. With InfoTag, you can choose what information you'd like to put on the tags and what material they're made of, with wood, metal, or plastic. What is InfoTag? InfoTag is an engraved label that you can place literally anywhere. You can put it on your bag, your keychain, or even your dog. If you lose one of those items, someone can look at the information and contact you. We are asking for an initial investment of $250,000. This money will help us pay for the CNC table and the laser, laser table, which will allow us to create your tags. Our target market is business people, business people ages 20 to 30, or people who simply love to travel. Our broader target market is parents who want to make sure their kids are safe by providing an info tag on their backpacks, people who forget things often, or anyone who simply wants to keep their valuables safe. 
After surveying local customers, we got positive feedback regarding our business. They told us things such as, with this, losing items can be prevented. They seem so convenient. I travel a lot, and I would love to buy this product. Our business looks like this. Customers will be choosing from our website a variety of preset designs. This will include a detailed clean design, their personalized info, and their choice of material. We plan to advertise online through our website, which is currently under development, and through social media platforms such as Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Our main competitor is Road ID. Road ID has custom bracelets that you wear on your wrist that have your, that have your personal information on them. Well, how does that make your products that you own that are very va valuable to you covered? It doesn't. It's more likely you lose your purse instead of yourself. Therefore, <laughs> therefore, our product is the best. We also have better prices than Road ID. Our prices will vary depending on complexity. Our simple tag with all the information you need will be $10. And our complex tag with custom engravings that you choose and we design will be $15. The cost to produce our product is estimated to be $5. This is mainly because of the process of designing and engraving our tag. Our tags. We expect to sell 1,800 tags and make about $22,500 in our first six months of operating. Our current status. We're all very passionate about our business and we will do everything in our power to make sure we are successful. It's a big world. Don't forget your info tag. And this is a prototype that we developed in our tag. We couldn't make it out of metal or wood because it kind of has the manufacturing lot. So this is our website. It's under development right now. You can contact us with this button. We have a description. And here are our first three products. The simple plastic info tags, metal info tags, and wood info tags. And we're planning on adding complex info tags onto there as well. And the designs that we're going to offer, for example, if you want your info tag to have Mount Shasta in the background, we'll make that possible. And also a variety of colors. And uh, engravings, too. Different fonts. That's it. Great job. Great job. Yeah, uh, so off the top of my head, I would think Road ID is one competitor. Have you guys heard of Tile in terms of uh, locating? So Tile is built in. It's a tech piece that uh, you can put on a bag or anything. And then there's a <coughs> basically the app finds whatever that Tile's on. Uh, we use it a lot for drones for when you're flying and your drone gets lost and then you're somewhere out in the middle of the forever. Um, my my initial feedback would be look look into Tile in terms of like a, a big big time competitor as well as uh, your your roundabout for the investment it'd be a really cheap thing to subcontract so instead of putting two hundred fifty thousand into a CNC machine look into the options of being able to subcontract that per order so then you don't incur a bunch of debt on the front end and you can actually take orders as they come and not get in over your head in terms of a huge investment on the front end. Uh, just, just feedback. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to piggyback on Sean, um, his feedback with a question. And uh, my question is, did you in fact discuss the possibility of adding a location technology to your tag? As a person over 50, oops, uh, and um, knowing much about an aging population, um, I would recommend also considering a um, location. We lose things all the time. <laughs> so um, my question is, have you looked into a way to, if I can't find my glasses, can your product help me find my glasses in less time? Did you talk about that? 
our main thing was we wanted to have something that you could put on a whole bunch of items and keep it at the lowest price as possible. And a lot of technology these days is really expensive. And like in the middle of the weekend, we had a major pivot and we changed our business completely. So we thought about that, but it was a little too much to start right now. But we could definitely involve that in our business later. With uh, the remaining time that you have, can you just uh, talk briefly about your experience uh, talking with customers? I think you briefly mentioned it during your presentation. Can, can you elaborate on that a little bit more and the feedback that you got? Yeah, so we talked to many people about the product, and they all, they all said they could have prevented losing something, and that they've all lost something, obviously, but they really liked our product because it was a way to keep their products from getting lost and getting them back easily. And it, it was also a stylish product that people were interested in. It's not just like a cheap plastic bag. It's made out of good material that everyone would like. And I would just I would emphasize that because tile tile's definitely going to be more expensive. So if you guys are going to under, undercut them on the price side, then that will give more value to the customizable They just officially outpaced Starbucks as far as number of gyms and versus number of Starbucks. Actually, Forbes rates them as a $4 million company. They've had 166% growth year to year. This is a phenomenon. If we think about the total addressable market for mobile apps, it's 473 million. Out of that, we, we assume that we can pivot and target those 3 million CrossFitters. And out of those CrossFitters, about 60% of them have children. We did a major pivot early on. We said we can't tackle the whole United States uh, obesity and chronic illness issue, but let's actually convert those very passionate CrossFitters into ambassadors in their family with a solution that John is going to show you. Well, as you can see, we're building an app for mobile phones, both Android and iOS. And the app is going to be geared to be really easy to use and very appealing to particularly young audiences. So, for example, you download this from the store, you present it with a really easy to, to use entry. Once you've uh, signed in with your Facebook or your other social media accounts, and you get to the point where you're ready to do an exercise, the exercises are chosen to uh, uh, help with your particular family. So if you get younger kids, they'll really appreciate like, something like the superhero uh, exercises. 
If you don't know what any of those are, you tap in a little button, it'll give you an explanation. Then you get started. At the end of your exercise routine, you take a group selfie, and that helps you to have all these great memories at the end of the exercise routines, and, and over the course of time, you've collected all these fantastic memories. Our software will actually track how well you're doing. It will give you a wow rating, or a fantastic, or a whole bunch of ratings based on, as I say, how good you're doing. For monetization, one of our additional features is a store. We plan to partner with some of the top <laughs> products, such as these balls, in addition to that partnership in sales, we'll add new exercises based on the knowledge that you, you know, we know that you have those products. So you'll get more content as you buy from our store. So that's, that's the app. So a fantastic opportunity to make exercise fun and bring people <laughs> together. But is there anything in this space? Yeah, actually, our biggest competitor is at First Square. Beachbody Online, if you've heard of Burn, they actually offer uh, to their 5 million plus monthly members, a new program coming out in November is the first time that they're actually emphasizing people working out together, called Double Time. No one, uh, and that's our sweet spot, is that we're saying the, the key here is to get groups of families motivating each other for fitness. We've done a lot of work validating this weekend, and in the, in the remaining seconds, I'll let you know that we went out to Stoneway CrossFit, uh, 505 members are interested in the app, 80% of them say they can't bring the whole family because it's too expensive. And we began Facebook ad testing um, on the website we built, uh, which will allow us to actually measure the cost of acquiring one of these CrossFit users. Our business model is $9.99 a month monthly memberships, along with the in-app purchases that John will do about. What we're looking for, to kick the project off, we're going to spend about 40% of that budget of $500,000 on software and then content. Um, will comprise the rest. Thank you. We just want to say a warm thank you to Stoneway CrossFit, um, Shasta Yoga, as well as Mountain Fitness for allowing us to invade their facility and ask a bunch of questions. And we just thank you for what you're doing in the community. Thank you for your presentation. Those of you who know me know I'm going to love this project, but it will not bias my um, my business evaluation. Quick question, please explain the name. Huh. You know that was actually a, a nod towards the target audience. WAJA stands for workout of the day. It's a concept that CrossFit popularized. So every day there is a custom workout that everyone in CrossFit can do. And so workout of the day, and yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> do you guys think uh, you're going to have a free version of the app, or is it just going to be a paid subscription? For uh, our marketing strategy, we're going to need a free version of the app, which will allow some of those viral photos and hashtags to get out there. But the premium subscription will allow you to have uh, more content and access to uh, some special modules like Superheroes. And what do you think, what's going to drive the user to go from that um, free app to the paid app? I think uh, over time they're going to see they're going to have limited access. The, the exercises are going to start to repeat, um, and then they're going to want to do um, maybe more music. Uh, they're going to see their friends posting different pictures and superhero poses. And like, well, we should get the superhero module. Um, so a bit of social pressure from the community as well as better. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Morgan Miller. I'm Barbara Wagner. My name is Telia Nudy. And, and we, we are, are the co-owners of Tomorrow's Vintage Toys. Tomorrow's Vintage Toys really wants to integrate our online modern society with our offline heritage. You know, um, phone addictions can really be isolating for family members. And we really want to bring a balance to family life by integrating, you need a microphone? Yeah. By integrating. <laughs> Nobody can hear. 
We want to integrate um, our moments of isolation where we're all in our own spaces in the house and bring about family um, memories. Vintage Toys Company goal is to bring back the meaning to family playtime. Whether it be building a model airplane with your dad or playing with blocks, it's really a chance that you get to connect with your family members. Our toys are made with locally sourced wood, which takes down the transportation costs and our waste. They are also non-toxic, and that makes it easy for you to handle. Alrighty, so our target market. We decided that since we're going to be producing a toy that families are going to love, is that we're going to be targeting new and developing families and grandparents of those families that are going to want to buy a toy that their children and everybody else in the house is going to be capable of playing with. And we talk to mothers and grandmothers and grandparents, and they're willing to spend more money out of their gift budget to spend uh, on an item uh, that will last and the family can treasure for many generations. And grandparents especially understand the value of toys that last. Um, we view our customers as family. So we really want you to get to be a part of our vintage toy family. So that is why we are going to bring our toys where you can experience them. All right, so for us, customization of our products is going to be key. We wanted to make sure that families could take any of the products that we're hoping to incorporate. As you can see, we're trying to take plastic toys and kind of give them a more wooden, natural style. But what we really wanted to incorporate was anything from family names, important dates, maybe an anniversary name. We really wanted people to be able to make our products their own in their families. And then if we want to go to the next one. All right, so this is actually what we're very proud of. This is actually our own design. You can see right here, we've engraved Vintage Toys, our company name, on the side of the wing. This is a building assembly kit. We believe families are going to love assembling, disassembling, taking it apart. It's supposed to come with a nice box. We don't have a prototype for you because we were trying to get the manufacturing shop open, but we do have lots of pictures for you of just prototypes that we've worked on before. And so then we're going to try to show you our website. And Ms. Telia is going to be talking about that in just a second. So our market strategy to get people to our website, we wanted to use social media such as Facebook, uh, Twitter, just all the social media that is out there. Um, so this is our website and it shows our product. If you click on it, it will give you your product description, but it really shows you the meaning of family behind our business. And if we scroll down, you can see our goal, our family. We did a slideshow on how we were going to be building our toys in the USA, how they're going to be ecologically sustainable. Um, a big thing for us is that even though we want our toys to be built to be durable and to be capable of withstanding families for long times, but we wanted to really emphasize to embrace the break. That is our kind of slogan. We want toys to be able to be battered and bashed because we believe that the important things in life are going to throw some hard things at them. And so that's what we try to design our toys around. Our biggest competitor we found is a company called Melissa and Doug, and although there's many other companies out there just like them, they seem to be the most, the largest company and the company that thrives the best. And they incorporate some plastics into the toys, which is something that we don't really value in our toys, and they don't offer a personal customization to make your toy your own, which is something that we have. Alrighty, so our market, we just wanted to emphasize that this is a $7 billion market. We're targeting games and puzzles mainly because that's on the rise, really important there. Um, infants and toddlers also on the rise, we're just trying to emphasize all of those points. Um, our customization is what's going to make us different. And our marketing is divided into two separate things. We have direct phases and our indirect phases, so we want to incorporate middlemen at phase two, so we'll be selling our products directly and then incorporating middlemen like Costco and local businesses to really get our products out there. Today's toys, tomorrow's heirlooms. Designed for fun. And built to last. Vintage toys. Um. Thank you. This is very fun to see the family be so central to your product. Um, have you consulted the 
discipline of childhood development and how that would relate to your product design. So I'm sorry to reiterate, you mean how child psychology and how the toys are going to be different than current toys? I'm trying to... So not child psychology, but childhood development. Um, there's appropriate uh, colors yes. and shapes and things related to toy appropriateness. Mm -hmm. And I wondered if you consulted that discipline in designing or customizing your toys. Mm -hmm. Well, definitely. We tried to incorporate a lot of different values of the different vintage toys by trying, we wanted to bring back more of an airplane style or a train or things that are generally used. But what we'd like to also incorporate is not just focusing on the children, but focusing, we believe that values are going to be more highly placed on family time. So mom and dad are playing with me in the toy. So it's going to be more beneficial and even the behavioral acts of what the toy user is designed, even though we do think that it's a big portion and we are going to be looking into that. One toy that we had talked about, you know those rings that you can stack? You can stack them, they're meant to be smallest to largest, but you can really stack them in any order that you want. And so we like the toys where like a square has four holes, so you have to get it exactly onto the four hole, you know, for like a learning the shape kind of thing. And that would really target our infant and toddler market. And we were talking about uh, childhood developing skills a, a couple weeks ago when we started really discussing this business. What was the age range that you guys were shooting for? Um, our age range actually is really, it's an interesting topic to talk about because we are trying to target, yeah, for the toys in general, we're trying to target anywhere from an infant to about maybe even our age where we can enhance those older audiences. But we did really want to make sure there was an emphasis on pulling the parents into that. So that it's not just the children playing with it, it's the parents as well. Because we really think that getting all everybody together is going to be really beneficial towards that. So it's kind of mainly younger, but we also want to emphasize parents and the grandparents playing with the play as well. I think kind of refining that into a, a more specific age range is going to help you guys, just because we're, we live in an age that it's a 12 second attention span. And so you're, you're talking about taking that and moving it back. So when we were kids and you know, playing in the dirt, playing with sticks, and a very nostalgic time, um, I think that if you guys go shock and blast all the way up into the teenage years, it's going to be harder to pull in clientele because of that same thing. Like, as cool as a wooden wow, wow. airplane is going to be, or <coughs> that, the, the amount of time that you're going to be able to play with that or keep your child interested is going to vary. So I think that the more you can refine it into um, knowing that target audience, and, and gearing it towards that specific age range, the more specific the product will be for the customer. And that would be our target audience, our target market. The people who we found who would buy these toys would be grandparents because they really understand the meaning behind these toys. And Lunch Lady Food Truck, providing healthy food on wheels to local high school students and community members. The main problem that we're trying to solve is that there really isn't healthy and tasty food available at Mount Shasta High School, which brings us into our other problem, that the lunch period is only 35 minutes long, which is not an ideal time to go out to the store to get food if you didn't bring lunch or don't want to get the school lunch. Which brings us into our solution, which is providing fresh, healthy, and tasty curbside cuisine to students and community members that's affordable and nutritious and that showcase, showcases seasonal local produce and accommodates dietary preferences like vegetarian, vegan, and gluten-free in a teen-friendly way. Because let's face it, hungry teens cannot be happy or healthy. So the value proposition is to save students time and money, and uh, better food generally equals better health, better student academic and athletic performance, and that leads to better school reputation, more residents in the town, more economic activity, 
and a win-win-win for all residents. So our business model is to make money serving food to the students at the high school. And another thing is, is we're hoping to get sponsorship from local farms so we can have fresh natural food. And we also want the community support, you know, we want people to have us there and to rent the truck out to other school things. And another thing too is it doesn't have to specifically be at the school. You can move it for other times for dinners or whatever at festivals or events. Our press release, or we could be going to the newspapers, or like the local newspapers. We're also going to go on the flyers to spread around the news. We're also going to be doing social media, so afterwards we'll talk about health, education, like good education or organic stuff. We can also have school announcements because you have school news at the high school. So we spread that also spread the word around right there. We're also going to do a grand opening party. So our competitive analysis, students usually spend anywhere from 10 to $15 at the supermarket or fast food restaurants. So we're going to offer a tastier, more inexpensive and healthier alternative for around $7.50 per student. Uh, so the financial projections, uh, we're hoping for around a $34,000 profit for the first year. It's a little bit sp specific. but. Um, uh, this sort of depends on being able to uh, purchase the food truck through community fundraising and, uh, and then uh, throughout the year our total revenue is around 96000 and then you can see the cost below there. Um, I don't want to go into the actual numbers but that's, that's kind of what, we, what we're projecting. Okay, so um, our studies show that about 95% of students and parents over the past three years have taken surveys at school and that amount of people have said they're dissatisfied with the meals at school. Um, we have a, a newsletter that goes out monthly. Maya and I have been um, talking about this situation uh, for months now and we have um, 153 parents signed up for updates about um, what our progress is in changing the uh, meals in the school. Um, we have numerous endorsements uh, from, from um, great businesses and community organizations in the area, and um, Mount Shasta City Council uh, member, Tim Stern, informed me that, um, that Mount Shasta is in favor of food trucks and there really wouldn't be any um, local barriers to that. Free parking. <laughs> also, um, for the judges, make sure to check out our website, um, www.lunchladyfoodtruck.wibby.com. And um, another thing is at the bottom of each slide was quotes from students about the school lunches from the survey. and. Um, Thanks to Techstars and Siski Startup Weekend. Questions? Okay, good job. Um, I love your idea. The, um, my question is, are you planning to only serve lunches or are you considering breakfast because I know breakfast is a big issue as well with students not eating or have you considered breakfast and other meals? Um, we did consider breakfast although for high schoolers it's um, eight o'clock start and it would just be um, hard for them they're always pushing the limit to when they can get up um, but the lunch for that is is a good resource because they, um, they don't really have time to pack a lunch in the morning, so they can still hurry to school and know that there's a lunch waiting for them at lunchtime. Uh, I think it's an awesome idea. I think that it's something that was an issue when I was in high school, middle school, and I think it definitely addresses a local problem. Uh, $7.50 per meal seems really cheap, 
So is that because you're working directly with farmers and you're not buying it from a supermarket or you're cutting out a middleman or how are you guys getting it that cheap? Um, we're hoping to get sponsorship from uh, local food growers uh, and so we can, we can actually provide uh, advertisement uh, on the truck itself and to have them provide some of the meal, some of the food at cost. And that's hope, and, and then as we, as we actually, actually a, a profitable uh, business, we, we, we want to subsidize the food somewhat. So it's kind of, it's a little bit of a circular thing, but we're hoping to get community support um, and provide that advertising, basically. Can you say a little bit more about the community fundraising you're going to do up front for the food truck? There are lots of entities interested in supporting the proliferation of food trucks. Say more about your thoughts on that? Right, so um, there is a great deal of community interest. Um, just from talking to members of the community, um, we know that, that there's a great deal of support and people want us to succeed. Um, one thing we're considering is um, partnering with some of the, um, the summer food programs, such as Great Northern Services does a summer lunch program, and uh, sharing a food truck with them um, could, could reduce that cost. Um, we won't be using it in the summer. There's also the Boys and Girls Club of um, the Siskiyous. They have an after-school program at Sisson, and um, I know the executive director, he and I have been talking about how to improve meals. And I think that he would be interested in an afternoon food truck. He would like to serve dinner to his students. Um, and, yes. Um, sorry. Oh. The other way to um, reduce the amount, to reduce the cost of lunches, um, we see that there is a great deal of food insecurity among teens in Mount Shasta and so having this um, food truck we might be able to get funding from um, a food bank sort of thing where um, the, child, the students could get vouchers and there would be no um, stigma attached or uh, shame because um, they, would, they would be using like a food card you know everyone could purchase like a debit card kind of for lunch um, but they could get theirs at a reduced rate. Um, we also... <laughs> and more! And more! absolutely dreading is about to come. I am going to abscond with the judges and uh, decide your fates, I guess. Um, no, nothing nothing quite so serious, but uh, that's what we're going to do. But while the uh, judges are uh, deliberating on those criteria and all this hard work that you guys did, just know how fantastic it really was. Okay, I, as a, as a guy who's been to a lot of Startup Weekends, I'm super impressed, not only with every single one of you here, but also the community. It's fantastic. This is great. And I really hope this is the first annual Cisco Startup Weekend and not just the first one. So we're going to go and do that. But we don't want you sitting around doing nothing and just feeling nerve-wracked. So you should all have three voting dots. Do you, is everybody good with the thing good? Yes. Right. Um, if you don't, let me know. We'll get to, Okay. Next story. Those voting dots are for a crowd favorite. So you guys can decide which ones you like best. So here's how it's going to work. We have the five posters on the wall above uh, the sponsorship table over there, and you guys can take those three dots and go and vote for the teams that you like the most. Two rules, and only two rules, and both of these are going to be on the honor system. The first one is don't vote for your own team more than once. One of the three dots may go to your own team 
but the all the other two must go to another team. That's just going to keep it fair and fun. And the um, that's that's really that's basically it. Don't don't cheat. I guess would be the other thing. But that's kind of implied so by the honor system. Like if there's three yeah, you can put two on one, you can put all three on one as long as it's not your own. The only real rule is don't vote for your own team more than once. So one dot meaning one dot meaning one vote. Okay, one that's dot. It. Yeah, and you get you get to vote all three dots, but only one can go to Freedom Fuel. Okay. Okay. How about it? No, yeah. Okay. The moment you've all been waiting for is finally here. Now I am going to ask that when we do this, you guys do the traditional drum roll. Hey. Right? Oh, that's that's there. there we go. What your crowd favorite is? Drum roll. that we still have to go through first place, second place, and third place. So I won't drag this out any longer, except of course I will. So I really want to know what people learned this week, and it's really important to me, it's really important to people at Techstars and Startup Weekends everywhere. I just want anybody who wants to, to take a second and say something that they've learned. If, you, if nobody raises their hand, I will just call on people. Carl. This will challenge your perception of what a weekend started with. I've never been, but it will challenge and make you think. I like it. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Colleen. Um, that you can have a business, um, even though you're just out to help other people, it can make money. Yeah. Excellent. Maya. Um, you can learn how to, um, how to create a successful business, um, like all the tools and resources you need. Alexis. That it's a lot harder to make a successful business than it sounds like. You can't just have like, <laughs> yes, you, yeah. you can't just have like one idea and then move on with it. Totally true. Jacob. Or to make very good elevator pitches. <laughs> yes indeed. Don? It's amazing how much you can do when you've got a deadline. <laughs> <laughs> totally true, totally true. Jonathan? Uh, just to be able to really refine your message and your pitch so you can waste less of other people's time listening to it. Yes. And just get your message across really quickly. That's a skill. Yes, all of that is, is very true. I'm glad you guys all learned that. Anybody else have anything they want to share that they've learned? Yes. This is actually the greatest place for encouragement for businesses that have ever ah. yeah. oh. <laughs> yeah. That's what we want to hear. Well, do you guys want to know what I learned? Sure. I learned that Siskiyou County, that Mount Shasta, is a place for startups. Yeah. That's what I learned. You guys got this stuff. Okay, so just a last little thank you to everybody. I mean, you guys were part of a global community. We had sponsors from Google, from a peer in, from .co, from, uh, from Techstars, of course, and, and all they put together, the local judges, the coaches, the speakers, the, the mentors, everybody who did that. And so, and again, this would not be possible without Nancy and Bright and the whole team that have put this together. So let's give them another round. So regardless, of whether you technically win or technically lose tonight, what comes next? I want you guys to know a couple of quick things. The first is that only 12% of people, teams, continue with their ID after Startup Weekend. I hope that's not true here, but um, that's, it, it's not really about that. It's not about, let's go to Startup Weekend and form a business. It's let's go to Startup Weekend and learn how. It's let's go to Startup Weekend and meet people. Let's form teams, because teams are better than any idea that you have. Right? I told you guys on Friday, and so I'm going to say it again. Right? The ideas are worthless. By definition, they have no inherent value. But all of you do, and all of the teams that you form are where that value is. And so hopefully you guys all met new people and learned new skills that will that'll help you make whatever idea you choose to pursue very, very successful. But I do hope you guys do pursue um, these ideas. And the last thing to mention is just that 
Failing sucks, except that it doesn't, right? It feels pretty bad, but we all fall on our face. The first startup that, that I tried crashed and burned spectacularly, and I won't bore you with the story, but uh, at least not right now. Um, but uh, but failure is going to happen, and we're going to learn a lot from those failures. And that sounds so cliche to say, but I want you to think back on this weekend. Think on the biggest things that you learned, and think about what led you to learn them. I'm betting it was something that went wrong. It's the pivot. It's and the be pivot. like water. Yes, the club. Uh -huh. Yes, exactly. The Jackie Chan. Be like the water, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the next thing is, it doesn't stop here, don't stop learning, keep going, there's so much out there to help you learn. Uh, right here in Mount Shasta, you have all of these great resources to, to help you continue with your idea, take advantage of these resources. You have all these here, branch out, you have resources in Reading, in Sacramento, in San Francisco, globally, everywhere, all these great resources out there to help you, take advantage of them, and don't stop learning. So, if you guys want to get involved and uh, organize a startup weekend or whatever, you can get in contact with me. There'll be a survey that I'll, I'll mention later um, that you guys can, that you'll all get, um, that'll ask you if you want to be part of this, you want to help organize these or participate in more. That's definitely something that you should do. If you want to do what I do, you have to go to two, you have to organize two startup weekends, and then you can do what I do. Uh, you can facilitate these. And if you just haven't had enough, which it sounds like you really haven't, then we have a startup weekend in Reading on November 10th. You, of course, can't bring the same idea, but you can bring a different idea or just come and join a team uh, down there on November 10th. It'll be fun. And I have a little promo code here. You can memorize it because it's SW Siski, but if you forget, I'll remind you. And that'll get you about 25 bucks off the cost of the ticket. If you're a student, that knocks it down to about 25. And if you're, um, if you're uh, not a student, then that knocks it down to 50, I think. So. I hope uh, I will see you all all down there um, and check out any events anywhere else. Again, we saw on Friday how many of them there were around the world. Well, let's hear from Josh. What? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. 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 Your applause nourished this morning. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I mentioned. Tell you are bouncy and energetic. Okay. <laughs> You'll get a survey, but it's not for me. Uh, so you'll get a survey at, uh, at Tuesday at 4 p.m. Yes, that's very specific. Because you'll get one in the email that you use to register on Eventbrite. Um, that'll, that'll come out. It really, really helps. It's going to basically ask you to rate the experience on 0 to 10. <coughs> Be honest. It's, it's not your name and all that. It's not going to me. It's not going to Nancy or Bride or, or anybody else. Um, so, so be honest with that because your feedback is really important to us. But uh, really do fill it out because share your experience, tell stories, whatever you want to do. And there will be a question on there. If you want to help be an organizer, um, we'll, we'll, you can put that information there and Techstars will route it to your, to your community. So that's great. Without further ado, the moment you've been waiting for, right, you start in third place. Okay, um, I want to give a huge shout out to Thad Wallace, who is our manufacturing instructor here at Manchester High School, and to Jedediah Drew and Sapphire. Um, they designed these um, and then manufactured them for this evening for all of us. Um, Those are cool. And I will tell you that uh, they were so cute when they brought them to me. They were like, Mrs. Stock, this has metal and wood and plastic, and it represents our entire lab right here. So. <laughs> Congratulations. All right. Sorry. Should we just stop here? Should we? Oh my God. That's the word. Lunch lady, food truck. Come on up and get your award. You'll have to figure out who's going to take it. But. <laughs> you can get yeah, one up. Congratulations. There you go.
Great job. Congratulations to everybody. Okay. Now, it's not everybody won, and that's a lame thing to say, but it's true. It's only lame because we have to keep saying it because we all forget how much we learned today. But uh, the learning's really not over because the judges have uh, a little insight that they want to give to all of the teams. Um, so I'm going to let them go ahead and take it over. Congratulations again. Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations again. Um, each of us are going to share just uh, some a few points. I'm going to talk about each. Uh, each of us will take one business. So I wanted to share with InfoTag. Um, loved your regroup. You epitomized pivoting this weekend. It was great. And um, you heard some comments about cons reconsidering your initial investment and going to that much debt and maybe looking for somebody else to manufacture your product, because you probably could do that, along with an ID locator, thinking through what that might look like. And you really listened to what people were saying to you in terms of the product, in terms of your target markets, and also from some of the comments, so um, I know that will take you far. And uh, vintage toys. Let me just start by saying it was a great presentation. Really impressive that you put that together and, and the quality that, just the quality of your presentation, not only the speaking, but, wow. but your PowerPoint and all. But on top of that, I think you're very much on the right track in terms of who you're targeting and who you're marketing to. Um, it's all about healthy lifestyles. It's about targeting one of the largest and wealthiest slices of the U.S. population. It's about resonating with family values. Um, your hardest, your biggest challenge with that said is there's a lot of competition. And so I think it's all about refining your, your marketing and, um, you know, if fidget spinners can make it, you can make it. It just takes, it just takes that spark to build a bonfire. And I think if, if you just keep at it, refining your marketing, you're well on your way. Good luck. So you all did really well. Uh, just for clarity, none of us had the same top three in the judges panel. So just for the record, it was very close and everybody had their different opinions. I think that the top three was all very well deserved. Uh, I'm going to speak to Freedom Fuel. Uh, I, I resonated with your idea so much because we're coming off of one of the most aggressive fire seasons definitely in my lifetime, um, possibly the last half century. Uh, the real things that we kind of agreed that we needed to kind of get buttoned up around that idea is, one, how much it's going to cost to purchase fuel, and if that fuel is going to be gained from contracts working with federal and state government, and if you're going to be the intermediary of kind of the third party working between the federal government who's presumably going to be doing this thinning uh, and fire protection in the coming year and if if you're going to be then taking that fuel and selling it to each home and what that uh, kind of uh, what that structure will look like and how you're going to be getting that fuel to, into each person's home um, and then just trying to build around what the actual uh, unit is going to work like and how it's going to uh, be something that can be affordable to go into every home, uh, as well as uh, refining it into something a little bit more proprietary, because obviously the technology isn't proprietary, but it's how you're going to package that into kind of the branding around that. Um, but great job, and I think that it's on the forefront of what they're going to have to do this upcoming fire season. Yeah. Okay, I was wondering where my glasses were, so I had to get my second pair. Um, okay. <laughs> so, here we go. Yeah. Um, okay, well, I am, had a couple thoughts for the lunch lady. Um, first of all, congratulations on winning the popular vote. And second of all, you were popular with us too, obviously. 
Um, I want you to know when I first moved to Mount Shasta in the year 2006, when this nice man was graduating from high school, uh, I wanted somebody to come and bring healthy lunches to my kids at school. So it's just a wonderful idea and, and maybe one whose time has come. So um, a couple thoughts for you. Um, I was not too confident about the projections and the reliability of the survey data because people will complain but they won't act. So I would recommend um, to spread the risk of, around um, by possibly considering doing a day at Mount Shasta High School and a day at Weed High School and a day at Dunsmuir High School so that it's a special, particularly in the launch phase, that's a special startup idea. It is a $7.50 instead of $4, sort of helps weave it into the family planning there. So to travel around and spread the good healthy meals around and then also it could possibly um, consider um, extending your service period so that once the school lunch period is over that families are invited um, or business people, local people can come and, and, and do the next hour uh, of service with you for healthy lunches because let's face it, everyone needs healthy lunches. Um, and so these were just ways to increase your market right away and not rely on fickle student money because sometimes mom gives them the money and it doesn't go to the lunchroom. Um, so the other, <laughs> sorry, and then another thing would be um, for securing stability financially, I really believe in my heart of hearts that there would be possibilities after proof of concept in a, in a pilot phase that the school system I hope there's nobody here from there. Um, they have a budget for feeding the students at a price. And in the business I do, we have a thing called a buy-up. So you could probably consider negotiating a piece of the food budget, which um, helps sustain the ongoing operation, but where you're selling at a, at a buy-up. So, so those are just some ideas. I, I would love, my son is going to start high school next year, and I will be a very happy customer if this comes to pass. Um, I think there was one other, those were my main things, except I really appreciate your hearts and desires and um, also your timing, that prevention is an amazing paradigm shift in America and Siskiyou County uh, has, a, has a lot of momentum around healthy food and we do, um, we do, when we can create a healthy food business that is sustainable on its own, then that makes it available to those students and those the food um, scarcity issue. It, it creates a sustain. We want to go for sustainable business on its own that makes it available. Maybe WIC or SNAP Ed or those other dollars. But we, we have to be careful to try not to fund off of grants and momentary money. We have to build it to to live, and then we can extend our service using donations and whatnot. So that's my 14 cents. Right. Okay, and I have Wadjet, and you guys did an excellent presentation. I was very impressed. Um, it was a great delivery, totally sold me. Um, I would definitely be a customer. Um, I appreciate that you are trying to involve the whole family and give it a little bit of a different sin. Um, I think that online fitness and the CrossFit industry is really booming right now and a lot of you know stay at home moms and you know just different uh, groups of people are into it and um, you guys just did a really good job the only things that I always critique is maybe considering um, ways to make the app a little bit less expensive than um, or the membership fee um, than what else is out there right now um, and you know, that was mainly the, the only thing that I was looking at um, to improve on, but um, you have a great concept, and I'm proud of you guys. You did a great job, <laughs> all of you. <laughs> okay, we're basically wrapping up here. I'm just going to say the final two or three things. Um, one is, again, I was out there. I was not allowed to participate in the judging process, but I had to watch painfully knowing them many things you couldn't put in your pitches that they were wondering about and that I could not uh, clarify. But it was very, very close, as Sean said. Um, they all had different choices for their top three, which means the, the following. Um, you know, if you, if you did not place today, 
you got close, so don't feel too bad about it. And if you did place, be humble, because you almost did. So, <laughs> um, just, just keep that in mind. Um, and uh, one more round of applause for all of the participants. This is all about community. And so uh, there's a Facebook group now. I'm a member of it, as are, I just noticed a couple of my friends from the start of Community Reading. We've all joined uh, your group up here. So this is your, this is your group, but we're on it now. Um, but uh, Facebook, uh, Cisco Startup Weekend Group, uh, I recommend, like everybody just join. I know I don't use Facebook all that often. I'm sure a lot of you don't either. But um, if, you join, if you join the group, you'll be kind of in the know about all the resources. You have a place to join and connect. And, so forth, so I, I really do recommend that. I'll put that back up in just a second. The last thing, it really did shut off exactly as I was pushing the slide. Um, the last thing is, of course, this is all about, we do this for you guys. So um, I had a great time, I really, really did, and I hope you guys all did too. Uh, enjoy in all of your successes in this, and then please keep in touch. You can keep in touch with me and, and, and everybody else. Um, I would like that, so thank you, and mingle. <laughs>